podcast. Yeah, this is Billy Zapka listening and talking on Regular Joe's podcast, and I recommend you do the same. No mercy. So if you're listening in to the Regular Joe's podcast, know that this is Beverly D'Angelo sending love out for anybody who loves me and who loves the Regular Joe's podcast. Yo, what's up, guys? This is Daniel Logan. I play the young Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones and also the Clone Wars. This is the Regular Jones Podcast. You listen to the guys. Make sure you tune in for some more great interviews. Can you just say your name and that you're listening to the Regular Jones Podcast? My name, and I'm listening to Regular Joe's podcast. That's excellent. That, is that proper? <laughs> we were kind of going for you to say to your name, and you are listening to the Regular Joe's podcast. But again, you're uh, an actor. You've got to put your own crap spin Howell. on things. You're listening to Regular Joe's podcast. Hello, everybody. Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to the Regular Joe's podcast. You know what time it is? Morphin' time. Yeah. My name's Jason Isaacs, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's podcast. Hi guys, my name is Katrina Law and you are listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. And I'm Luciana Caro from Battlestar Galactica and you are listening to the Regular Joe's. Hi, this is Martin Cove, your sensei from the Karate Kid movies and you're listening to a Regular Joe's Podcast. And just remember, if you're not listening to Regular Joe's Podcast, there's no mercy for you. My name is Rooker and you're listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. Hi there, I'm Mike Quinn, and you'll know me as Nine Num from the Star Wars films, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. Hey, I'm Nikki Klein from Battlestar Galactica, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's. How are you guys? Hey, Sam Jones, Flash Gordon here, and you're listening to Regular Joe's Podcast. Hi, I'm Seth Gilliam, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. This is Stephen Williams, and you're listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. Hi, I'm Tim Rose. I played Admiral Akbar in Return of the Jedi, The Force Awakens, and finally and sadly, The Last Jedi. You've been listening to the Regular Joe's Podcast. And remember, it's a trap. Welcome to the Regular Joe's Podcast. I'm Barry Kay. How you guys doing? Um, happy holidays. Hope you guys are uh, enjoying the end of the year to the best of your ability. Um, if you listened last week, you know that we are sort of doing an end of the year retrospective on our uh, amazing times that we've had at Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, as with all cons, uh, there were none this year, or there at least not in the areas that we were in, and even if they were, we probably wouldn't have gone to them. But uh, we do love Rhode Island Comic Con. It's our favorite show of the year. Uh, we always have a great time. We always set up in the lobby at the Omni Providence uh, and do our best to get some interviews for the show. And most years, we've been really successful. So we thought it would be fun to sort of uh, just, you know, edit them all together, put them into a end-of-the-year wrap-up, and hopefully you guys enjoy listening to it as much as... Uh, we enjoyed doing them, and it's kind of fun for us even to go back and revisit. There are some people I had forgotten we interviewed, and some of the things they had said to us I had forgotten they had said, so it's fun for me to even go back and, and re-listen. So before we get started, I would be remiss if I didn't say please follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, and leave us a review on iTunes. Um, check out our sponsor, Fanboy Collectibles, at fanboycollectibles.com, and check out their store in Newtown, Connecticut. Tell them the regular Joe sent you. And uh, without further ado... Let's go uh, back to the Rhode Island Comic Con interviews, starting with 2017, which uh, was a great year for interviews for us. We had a great time, so I hope you enjoy revisiting it with us. Here we go. There's that dude. What's going on, hey, buddy? Hey, Brian O'Halloran. We're doing a podcast. podcast. It's a voiceover podcast drive-by. Brian O'Halloran. I'm out. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I totally forgot his first name. Uh, that's why I'm here. I'm the Kevin Smith guy. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. We got more than we got last year. We already. did. It's already. Right, we're I'm already ahead of the game. Uh, Jason Isaacs of Star Trek Discovery and many other and things. And Harry Potter he's, and many other things. We're not going to talk about Star Trek We won't Discovery. talk about Star Trek. What does Malfoy think about Star Trek? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, what do you think about Star Trek? What I want to hear is what is the wildest fan theory you've heard so far? Oh, God. It's, it's, I um, don't know, man. We wildest fan theory. I'm an Andorian, according to one, oh, lone really outpost, on one lone outpost on the internet. I don't know what they were smoking, but apparently I'm an Andorian. Oh, I think that I, is I do th- a good one. So we don't know how long it's going to go. It's, it looks like it's doing great. Renewed for a second season years. already. We're excited oh, about that. It's around a long time. You're going to be like Isaacs and not Isaac, that's your real name. I, we've had a couple of drinks. Lorca. Lorca, Lorca. And, 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 and Kirk. And uh, I'm no, telling you, you're going to be one of the, the heroes of the of, of the, the uh, federation. Of the yes. federation. Yeah, I yep. think you won't get any argument from me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sounds fine to me. We're at a point where we're at a in war. We've never seen a Star Trek where there's a war going on, and we need somebody who's doing, you know, something outside the box. You know, it's it's like you like you said yesterday. Even though you're not supposed to talk about it, we're in a different time. So it's sort yeah. of this. You know, the start of the war was this sort of turning point in the career. Yeah, I'm on the mic. So, that, I don't know. That's what I think. That's not a fan theory. That's just you drunk talking about stuff. <laughs> yes, no, all right, oh, so absolutely. Let's go, let's go. I'm a fan, and that's my theory. Oh, okay, fair And I'm going. Oh, Here's another theory. Good to me. The, the Klingons. The, yes. N- never He's, seen Klingons like this before, right? So, we were talking at dinner. Okay, this, yeah. I'll go tell ahead. you what my so, theory you go is. Go on. My theory is by the time this war is over, the people that we're seeing in this show as Klingons off the map. All dead. All dead. Ge- so reborn. Then we get, then that's, that's, Genetically. And maybe we that's how we get to the Klingons. Original I series think, Klingons. I think we're going to see some. the dregs of the Klingon Empire are going to be left to pick up the pieces. So here's my theory. Now, this is, yeah. does not come from the showrunners. Okay. Absolutely. They thought they talk about these things in, in infinitely more depth than I'm able to. Yes. Okay. Uh, they, they are mad adherents of canon. They'll spend weeks and weeks discussing where the trigger on the phases should be, stuff like that. I think the Klingons just look great. I don't oh, care, I do frankly, yeah. whether they end up being the people with the gigantic non-Botox mm-hmm. foreheads yep. or whether they just stay looking fabulously cool. Yeah. Uh, whatever the redesign, whatever the rationalization was or wasn't, if it's just that they look great, that's yeah. good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll but take we that. Were, we, were taught, we were always theory, like, you know, some of the showrunners have said that, and again, don't answer anything, you know, you're not able to answer it, was this takes place in the Kirk and Spock the original, original series universe. universe. No, no, there's, there's no argument. Very, very clear. But w- this yeah. is 10 years prior to the original we series. Feel it takes place in the, in the Abrams universe. The J.J. Abrams universe. Well, you can feel whatever you like, and I, will, I look <laughs> forward to, <laughs> to watching your show, but that's complete bollocks, as we say okay. in England. Okay, all right. It, it, okay. They, yeah. they could not it's have been clearer. Answer. It takes okay. place 10 years okay. before the original series, and it will reach a place, uh, hopefully not where we get the plastic sets and the, okay. you know, the... No, th- you know, and that's what we were actually talking about today is like, what if this war, and I know this is sort of the stupid stuff that people who want to have continuity think about. Yeah. No, there the will war, be continuity. The war sort of decimates the Federation, and they got to make simpler ships and stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't know. They're forced it, look, to make more basic In the 1960s, things. they were making the sets out of old exactly. washing up liquid bottles, right. and, uh, you know, yeah, if you hit it I too know. hard, it wobbled. And nobody wants to see that. You're right. No, no I know. You're, you're absolutely right. But right. us weirdos who've liked Star Trek for 40 see, years. Yeah. The way I look at it, this is what I've said, is, connected. Is I see Star, Star Trek is a framework of telling stories. Okay? Nice. So that, that you know, it's in, in this universe, there's a Kirk, there's a Spock, or there will be a Kirk and Spock. Mm-hmm. But what comes before, what comes after, it's just kind of kind of loosely ties together to tell a good no, story. I, no, it's tied in that. You, you have and to understand Simpsons. that the writer's room is full of people who are Trekkers to their Call, yeah. cut them open, you'll find Federation Prime Directive <laughs> etched on their hearts. And there are people in there who have been around from the beginning of it. There are yeah. people who've, been, who've written a bunch of Star Trek novels. So what they discuss what they call hard and soft canon ad infinitum. That nothing, no decision is made lightly. Sure. Uh, when it comes to ma- serious matters of plot, they have already worked out exactly how they're going to reach. Great. When it comes to whether the set should look like something built in the 1960s on a lower budget yeah. or whether, you know, the special yeah. effects. Yeah. No, it's not going to reach a time where we have really shitty sets, terrible fight yeah. choreography, and, uh, and almost non-existent special effects yeah. that are like yeah. someone drawing yeah. on, the, uh, on yeah. 
sell a film. No, it's that, that, there's a reason they're using the latest technology. That makes and absolute best sense. But in terms of story and who people are and where they get to, it's all been worked out. Yeah. No, well, no one should have a doubt. The set design and all that looks very cinematic. We've been saying that since the very oh first episode. Oh, my God. It's, it's like, it looks so not much on television like it. Television. It's really cinematic, which we love. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so. gorgeous. I and mean, yeah. what's weird being in it is that when I watch the show, of course, we don't have any of that stuff. We have, we have the set. It looks great. But the, yeah. the extraordinary um, kind of intergalactic things where you see ships landing on planets yeah. and the landscapes yeah. and right. all, we've never seen those before. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like awesome. everybody else, we're yeah. gobsmacked when they come yeah. on screen. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. That's, great. That's awesome. To, to, to rewind just a little bit, one of the things we were talking about before you sat down is that one of the reasons that people come to the show for engagement with people like yourself. And I was just saying that you were one of the best experiences I had talking to you. That you were you no. were really no, but I mean you asked us and questions. You you were very much like you are right it's not now. About paying just saying, fifty bucks to get an autograph. It's about that little connection. To that people. little connection. And, 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 and there's people who just like sign their name next. It has never come next. up. And that's what I people, like, is memorable. I genuinely and we, we, we like just, meeting yeah. the fans. And I feel if someone's driven twelve hours to see you, or they've booked out their annual vacation, or they you know they sure. sleep in the car. They should have a little special experience, a, a memory and a story and something that makes them makes me not get fired, but then feel like they've had yeah. an insight. But not but everybody's but like that, so you should, we tr- want you to like know it. that not everybody's we, like we're, that. Like and so fans we're just, appreciate just it. Just minutes Trust ago, me. we were praising you for that years. attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and that, that, I'm still that. fresh. I'm still enjoying every interaction with a fan. Yeah. I, I, I've yet to meet somebody, and I'm looking forward to who comes up and is incensed to outrage and wants to tell me why they don't like it. Of course, the people who come up to me are all coming up and telling me how much they love the show, and that's great. That's great. But I know there are people out there who like to have a good row, and I train yeah, as a lawyer. Especially Star Trek fans. My yeah. sleeves yeah. are rolled up. Well, and, yeah. and I'm nice. going to be honest and blunt. The, thing that I, the only thing I don't like about the show is the character design for the Klingons. It's been bothering me since they Well, you won. already answered that. You're, no, you're no, still no, no, no. He said yeah. he wanted to hear a gripe, <laughs> no, and I'm griping. Look, there are incredibly <laughs> long and tortuous explanations that they have, and they may well... They might even be forced into a corner where, yeah. by, you know, over the next eight, nine, ten years, ten years, whatever it is, ten years, that they will come up with some, or they may already have some genetic explanation. As far as I'm concerned, I don't give a flying fuck. I think they look fantastic. Right. Yes. Yep. You know? And remember, we're making the show not just for the people who've loved the show for sometimes 10, 20, up to 50 years. We're hopefully making a show for a brand new generation of people yes. who've never even heard of Star Trek. And we have to. Absolutely. I just we lock on, make, and yeah. they become the yeah. next generation of diehard fans. Yeah. We've made that, I've made that point over and over on the show where it just, this, is, this has got to be a point of engagement for new people coming in. And they can't be sitting there looking at it and saying, why, why does this no, look this, this way? This is why not a backwards-looking show. We intend to bring everybody along with us yeah. Who, yeah. who's always loved it. Not everybody. Yeah. You can't make everybody love it. Yeah. You never no. please yeah. everybody. Yeah. If you yeah. did make something that pleased absolutely everybody, yeah. then you'd be making something bland. That, and what they've done is, pardon my cheesiness, they've boldly gone. They've made some bold choices. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, no, they is, absolutely no, have. This is storytelling for 2017, which is a interesting challenging, troubled time. You're right. And the characters are all way more sophisticated and complicated because it's a single story. You can dive way deeper into relationships or consequences to actions. And people can be that fabulous thing that we are in life. They can be inconsistent as well. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. They're not yeah. that perfect archetype of this is the captain of a ship and they do this. And they yeah. can be flawed and, and, yeah. and, and have many different sides of their personality. But, but just on the technological side, we have screens on the ship. Yeah. And we have screens which are semi-holograms, then we have actual holograms. Because if we use the same kind of really shitty monitors that yes. was the state-of-the-art stuff in 1966 or 7, whatever it was, it would look appalling. Well, well, and, and, and they've even gone back and remastered those and put better effects into right. those episodes. If you look on the ship closely, if you get to visit the set, you'll see that the knobs and sliders are all fantastic retro nods to yep. the oh, design really? that's coming up. Oh, also, cool. we are, you're continually reminded that the Discovery is a one-off ship. Yes, I mean, yes. It's a state-of-the-art prototype. Well, uh, after I, you blew up the other one, of course. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, it, I've never been on Concorde. None of us will ever go on Concorde. Yep. Yeah. That supersonic jet, which would cross the Atlantic in the blink of an eye, was there and was around for decades before they grounded them. And, and the best of the, the, uh, in, the cross, I was say intergalactic, sorry, the transatlantic planes yes. we have now yep. are not a touch on it. Yeah. yeah. Concord, really good was, oh, oh, yeah. You want to something? So it's perfectly yeah. possible to build those prototypes. Could be budget cuts in the Federation. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, could, uh, but also, but more importantly, you talk about what is Star Trek and what have people loved about it. it. It's fine that there are people interested in the design of the phases and the ships and the you know where the, the chairs sit. And, yep. 
But Star Trek is an idea. Star Trek yes. is a concept. Star Trek, yes. as well as the practicalities of the universe, it's more if you had to choose, and you don't have to choose between them. It's about uh, it was about presenting an image of a group of people who work together for whom those boundaries that we're being re are being reinforced every day in our national international politics are irrelevant. Color, gender, sexuality, species. You know, there's, there's not a coincidence that back in the day there was a Russian and there was a, a woman yeah. and all these uh, various different diverse groups. And now we're embracing all those things and more. And that at the heart is at the very heart of Star Trek. It's the most important thing Absolutely. in Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. What was your well experience said. with Star Trek before you were hired? Uh, when I was a kid, I used to watch uh, Kirk and Spock religiously. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. You know, there was no VCRs or DVDs. And, and, uh, yeah. and so things were repeated all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There were three channels growing up. And I must have seen all of the original series, I, can't, I don't know how many times. Yeah. And I grew up in Liverpool uh, in a house where, in a, where we, had a, we always had a room for best. And what was best was, I guess it was when the Queen came to visit. It had plastic on the oh, furniture. Yeah. Okay. Nobody yep. ever went in there. Yep. My entire family, my three brothers and I, my parents, were crammed into a horrible, shitty room in the house where there was yep. a TV, just, just wedged into it, arguing over which of our three channels to watch. Except when Star Trek came on. When Star Trek came on, there was never an argument. We sat clued to it. And I think one of the great things about the show, when it's well done, is I'd be sitting there as a little kid, and my parents would be sitting there, and we would get something entirely different out of the same hour of television. Yeah. And that's a challenge for the writers uh, that I think they're living up to now and exceeding. Yeah, yeah. when it works yeah. on multiple levels, the kids get something out of it, the adults get something out of it. The, ad great. the adults are getting a, a political allegory or something very sophisticated, and the kids are just getting an adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely Ab right. Absolutely. All right, we well, don't want to take any I, I, more of your time. Well, he does. I was just going to ask go you a question. I was going to go off of... So, I haven't been drinking. You've done, I, a, I lot of different, you've done a, a lot of different <laughs> iconic roles. Do you have a favorite, or outside of going beyond Star Trek, maybe you, if you want to say Lorca's your favorite role, that's fine. But do you have a favorite role that you've done? It's always the next one. It's yeah, always nice. Okay. It's There's no point I, looking I, backwards. I personally hope the next one doesn't come too soon. Well, okay, actually, I'm starting to shoot the second season of the OA in, in I, a few oh, weeks. Yeah, we were, I would be yeah, very yeah. happy for that. So, oh, but, so but, we were asking that. We were talking about that. Do you think he's going to be on the next season? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. I, guess I don't right. know what they've written. Actually, I've got the scripts on my I, uh, computer upstairs, and I haven't started reading them. Really? Okay, some, so, of, yeah. <laughs> some of the yeah. most engaging TV I've seen in a really long time. Yeah, yeah, the the OA. Yeah. I think it's amazingly original. And not only that, they built for themselves an imaginative framework where they could do whatever they like in season two. I have yeah. no yeah. idea where You're it's going. You're absolutely right. And when I read it, yeah. I'd never read anything like yeah. it, and I had no idea what was coming next. And, you know, great storytelling. Often, you do have a sense of what's coming next. There's genre storytelling. For me, they, they almost invented a new genre. You know, I, I, I had said, that, I, I said the, the OA is about breaking TV as we know it. It's about, you know... The, the, Even the different lengths of the episodes, what, I thought, yeah. was yeah. revolutionary. That's you know, what we said, yeah. Being yeah. 50 minutes into an episode before you see the opening the credits. Opening credits, it's yeah. Just that like, was great. It's brilliant. Or, or having an episode that's 22 minutes long. Yes. Yeah. Because we all yes. have an internal clock. And, but we have a sense of the length of these stories when oh, they're coming to a close. Right. But and with it, that, you don't know what you're that's watching. That's what Netflix is and kicking it's, ass it's with being able to do all that stuff. It's television. It's just, it's, you're taking the medium and you're exploiting it to its furthest extent by doing that. I, I love that you're saying Yeah. 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 So I'll have stick a, around forever. If you, I'm, I have a bottomless pit of need for flattery. We all do, so. <laughs> you can tell me how great the stuff I'm in. And we'll do, do have that favorite all day. Harry Potter movie? Uh, I like Chamber of Secrets because it's the one I was introduced. It was the one I, yep. I suddenly got a sense of this, you know, the, the limitless possibilities of uh, this story. And also, you know, I went to work and I walked in and I just saw this roll call of great British theatrical royalty. Sure. And then after a while, you get a bit blase about these magnificent cathedral high sets and stuff but when I first went there I just was literally walking around like a Russian who defected yeah. in the 70s that's another a series where the, the, my, my kids loved it on a certain level and then my wife and I we got a whole different thing out of it I mean, it's another great we own all those DVDs and every time it's on TV my wife will watch it I'll tell you one <laughs> of, so many times during the publicity over the years uh, you get asked why do you think it's successful and uh, you know uh, you Anybody can have a stab at saying why, and there are. Yeah. I, having done hundreds of interviews, uh, I sometimes would say it's to do with loyalty and friendship. Sometimes to do with magic, but actually, the truth is, nobody knows what makes those things work right. because many other people have told stories with many of the same themes or, or, or plot elements. But I think one thing is definitely true about the way that they were written, knowing Joe a little bit, and the way that they were made as films. There was not a trace of cynicism in anybody. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, uh, yep. and I get slightly my back goes up a bit when people talk about it as a franchise. There were these seven books that she had in her head when she started. 
She told them, well, love, you can ask her about any element in it and she will take off on a tangent and talk forever. She's thought everything through. She knows the whole world. Mm, yeah. And those of us who are making it, although it was a giant enterprise, from the top down, right from the producers down, it was as, it was a labor of love as if they were making it with their own money and we were shooting it on a you know yeah. a handheld camera in, in someone's back room. It, it, there was no there was nothing corporate in any yeah. of the either conceptual really or execution phrases. Sense, yeah. And there's yeah. something of that in Star Trek too. You have to understand that the people who are working on it adore Star Trek, uh, and they don't make any decisions lightly. And they they're so thrilled they're getting to play in this sandpit that they've been thinking about. For yeah. all of their adult lives, and, and yeah. you know, that uh, purity of kids. vision is priceless. It's so even hear, when though. you don't like what they've done, or you don't think yeah. it's good, oh, or yeah. you don't like the elements, never doubt that it's been made by people who worship Trek. Yeah. That's great yeah. to hear, actually, because last year we were at the uh, the New York Star Trek convention, and it was when they were just really getting the show up and running, and they had changed show. They were about to change showrunners, right. right. and we went to the panel. And they couldn't really say anything, but you didn't necessarily get the sense that <laughs> we were very concerned. We were very concerned in the early stages we before we that. We, Believe me, we were all very aware of how yeah. unbelievably protective the yes. fan base is yeah. of this yeah. legacy. Because and it was the, a lot the, of like yeah. it got pushed back and all that. And we're like, oh boy, we could be. Yeah. And we were so happily surprised at how yes. great yeah. it came yeah. out. Yeah. I tell you what, I think uh, having watched it because obviously I'm only in the the. I'm not in the writer's room and I'm only right. in the elements that I'm in. So when I watch it, I'm pretty much like a fan. I'm, I'm, almost all of it is new to me when I watch the thing back. I'm impressed by how brave they've been in what yes. they're doing and how different right. it is. You well. know, not different for the sake of it. How, uh, and I've been around network television for a long This isn't network television. It's premium streaming television yeah. made by CBS. And there is a corporate touch that happens in a lot of television because yeah. everything is filtered through the same people who do development. Sure. And uh, they can't help but their, their personalities and their... The, the environment they work in somehow filters through to the storytelling and none of that seems to be present it's not really? it, there's no oh, well you tell me you're watching it it feels to me very unlike corporate storytelling yes. they're prepared to take risks with characters and relationships and with slow burning reveals of things whereas you know when you do a pilot for instance for CBS, NBC, Fox they are so uh, keen to make sure because they know their audiences that you continually repeat the story after every commercial break that uh, characters explain themselves that everybody's likable and relatable and stuff and, th and they really I think are, are uh, embracing the fact that this is a more adult and sophisticated mm -hmm. way to roll out a story that, uh, and, and, it's, and, they, it is and you can see it because you know we, we they really tr are launched all access on the back of this show I mean well that was the plan it wasn't ready yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. but the fact that they are being that much hands off with something that, like the DC superhero movies, there's too many cooks in this kitchen and they all get screwed up. Yeah. And to just and by the way, I've, I've been involved in projects like that. Yeah, you can have 20 talented people in a room, any one of whom, if they were given their head, would come up with a great story. But there's that old saying: a camel is a horse made by a committee. Yes, you know, you need a vision. Yes, yes. exactly right. We say that all the time because yep. Yep. you can see it, and you see there's too many people involved, and it's nice that they're staying back. And with such an important property. clearly a plan. Yeah, and yeah. I think uh, not only that. I mean, I, I I like the stuff that's happening. I'm biased because I really like all the people involved, and I, I love uh, the other actors particularly. Um, but I think that as time goes by, they'll get even bolder, more emboldened by the fact that very quickly that the people who were doubters and cynics. And cynics uh, I think have opened, you know, have embraced it, yeah. uh, or at least an enormous number of them, if not everybody. You, you, and that makes them, that will empower them to go further and, yeah. and be bolder in the storytelling. Yeah. You mentioned yesterday that you listen to podcasts and you've read stuff online and stuff like that. I, I have also noticed, I do much of the same, I've noticed this kind of shift from the initial criticism to all of a sudden, you know, it got a little quiet and now it's kind of the tide is kind of turned, very much turned in yeah. favor of, wow, this was exciting. And, and it's just, I mean, the it's, criticism was, before anyone had seen anything, yes. so, so yeah. fair enough, they're going, do not mess with the right. stuff that I love. Right. And then they saw a trailer, which had a whole bunch of whiz-bang explosions. They went, ah, it's just not going to be action. But that's what happens when you put together a trailer and you've only yep. shot two episodes. Absolutely. And you can't really, in, in a trailer, when you're trying to excite people, somehow, you can't reveal um, uh, the kind of depth of characterization yeah. and, the, uh, and the, uh, the complexity of relationships. And that just happens when you spend time. And the more time you spend with the characters, the less they need to describe them, and then you know you can show and not tell. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I some of the other actors in it who may not be, um, you know, haven't been around as long as I have, and uh, and who maybe don't get as much screen time as Sinequa, 
They're really remarkably talented, and the writers are beginning to enjoy, see what yep. they can do, and, and, and let them spread their wings. I think you're going to be thrilled when you watch some of the characters who've not yet featured too strongly. Nice. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you taking oh, my time yeah. to sit awesome. down well, with us and talk. Just to tell my CBS bosses and uh, the lovely Christian in charge of publicity, I was walking by and I, press ganged into this. Yes. They yes. shoved the microphone yes. in my hand. Yes. Yes. I was going for a walk. Okay. This was not planned. Okay. So take yeah. the handcuffs off now, Sean. Yes, we no. appreciate it. You, uh, thank you. Well, I have listened to the podcast and I enjoy it enormously. And one of the great things about Pick in the show is realizing that there are people out there who are prepared to spend this much time and think about the show this oh much. Oh, my God. Yeah. We talk about it every, every week. Can I tell you, when even if we haven't all li- watched it. Yeah. When you're making yeah. the show, to know that it's, it's like a hovercraft. You're actually you're kind of flying faster on this bed of passion and enthusiasm you know is everywhere. So uh, yeah. we thank you for it. Yeah. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Thanks Peter. a lot. It's so Thanks awesome. So we Thanks really so can't much. thank you enough. Hey, Such big fans. Thank Pleasure. you so much. Bye. Yeah. Tomorrow night's episode really kicks shit off. I'll tell you what I want to say more. Are you still recording? Sure. Oh, yes. I want to say one more thing because I, there's so many uh, fantastic and batshit crazy fan theories online, but very often when they impute motives to the producers that nothing to do with the story about other things of why things are on all access or, what, or you know, what's happening, the reason we're having a break and we're on in January is they haven't finished doing the shows. Yeah. We just wrapped yeah. and they've got a bunch of special effects and editing to do. So there's no kind of schematic strategy to do anything to anybody or their money or their time. They just aren't ready to be seen by anyone. So yeah, yeah. as soon as they're ready, they'll be seen. That's awesome, what's going awesome. on. Well, after the first episode, Dave said one sentence, sum up where, what, what you think. And I said, worth the wait. Oh, that's and fantastic. That's, that's, that's really how I feel. Well, it will be worth the wait. Cause let me tell you, tomorrow night, things start to kick off and uh, we're going into fifth gear from now on. Nice. Okay. Right. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So what's cooking, dude? How are you? We are here with Melody Anderson. And my exciting moment. I haven't seen these guys. When was the last time I saw you guys? Uh, it's, it's, earlier today, actually. <laughs> as a matter of fact. I yes. had you sign my Buck That's Rogers right. post, which I've been waiting for years to get you to sign, which I really appreciate. Buck Rogers. I'm sorry. I said Buck get Rogers. Get that right, Gordon. Gordon. Let's edit well, well, this. Stop, okay, well, stop oh the God. presses. We've I had meant, a lot of drinks already. Yeah, we've had a few drinks. I noticed. My <laughs> Flash Gordon poster, which I had Sam Jones sign years ago, and I've been waiting. It's a big spot. was perfect for your name. And appreciated you doing and that very much. Was. It's a great con. What do we have, 120000 or something? That's, that's a crazy number. Yeah. yeah, that's terrific. Really that's big terrific. turnout. You always had a big line. That was great. That's I know. But I, they still remember me after all these years. Yeah. So How there can you they go. Do you do a lot well, you put of, in a memorable performance. You know? I do, I do uh, probably three a year. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. But I haven't been to the East Coast for all. I did Atlanta last year and mm-hmm. Colorado and Hollywood shows and stuff. So... It's time to get a bit, get back to New York or uh, New Jersey, and and you know what, Chicago. I want to do. There's Chicago. so many of these now. There's, there's I know they're there all are. they're growing. It's the highlight of this stuff. It's so there's so many of them. There's nowadays. so many of them yeah. now. Yeah. A lot of fun though. Well, it's I nice because Sam Jones is here too. So yeah, right. Yeah, it's really it's nice to have him. We interviewed together. him two years ago. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. on the yeah. podcast. I think you were supposed to be here one year, but yeah. there was there was woman. a shooting in the L.A. airport or something. There was a, oh well, there, there was that, and then I was supposed to be here, and I was in a hit from behind by some Ooh. woman with four children in her Malibu who smashed me from behind didn't even look at me i have a little baby little hyundai and she comes with a big 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 suv and four children and i know she was on her phone so i just Ooh, want yeah. you to know yeah. lady i'm watching <laughs> don't text too. and drive yeah. people don't, don't text, text and drive, and drive. Yeah. Yeah. it's awful yeah it's so. awful good so but how's you, it going for you guys it's great. going good, great. good. We just, great had a, show. just had a great interview with um, jason isaacs oh, sure, isaacs yeah. Yeah. great yeah, yeah. And, here, and, uh, yeah. And we've yeah. set up in this lobby this is our fifth year we always record after the show yeah we do oh, it every fantastic. year yeah and, uh, great yeah. great yeah we've been doing the our podcast for how many years five years five years yeah. That's interviewed wonderful. a lot of people and glad to, glad to add you to the list well, Sam should be coming through here in the next half hour. Oh, so cool. Okay, great. You grab him, too. Be great to see so you again. So do yeah. you have any memories, like special no, memories from this? I know I you have memories. I was dropped on my head as a child. Anything from, from filming the movie or, or anything that is well, sort of know, a special memory? It was interesting. One of the fans came up today and said, what is your favorite line in the show? And I say... I told her, I said, it's the Go Flash Go line. That's, yes, yeah. You signed Be- that on my poster right, today. Right, yeah. because the Go Flash Go line was not in the original script. Mm. What happened in that fight scene was Sam was supposed to come and fight the bad guys, and I was supposed to be damsel in distress, which I wasn't going to play. And so what happened was they ended up, um, Sam was looking at those things that were being held by some of the, the um, amazing 
amazingly dressed uh, people from this, the art direction and the set design in that movie is amazing. The guy yeah. who did that worked for Fellini, so now you yeah. understand yeah. the yeah. Fantas- yeah. fantastic quality of it. Anyway, Sam said, you know, those look like footballs. Yes. I'm supposed to be a jet, so why don't we do... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that wasn't written that, into that the was not That's written so crazy. And then I thought, well, he's the all-American boy, and I'm supposed to be all-American girl, so I should have been a cheerleader, yep. right? Yeah. Absolutely. And that's when I brought in the Go Flash Go. Oh, oh really? Right. And I think that it was just a fabulous, the way yeah. it worked. And, and we had a wonderful director... Uh, who really was behind us and let us really bring pieces to the to the film, which was very exciting. Oh, that's great! Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it's such awesome. a, it, it really for its time, and I mean, it holds up with the. It's so so different. It's such an immersive environment. Well, and it was a unique set design and and it and was. the music. Having Queen do the music oh, was, was yeah. great. Oh, the Queen thing was fabulous. I yeah. went to see Queen a couple months ago. I took my my thirteen oh, yeah. year old son to see them, and for the encore, Brian May came out with a Flash T shirt on. No, it was great. Oh, it was so he's cool. So great. I, I had the luck of meeting Freddie and and him oh, really? at wow. some oh, wow. some function. That's yeah, terrific. yeah, amazing guys, amazing That's guys. Awesome. But you know, I I sort of liken it to sort of. The Wizard of Oz yeah, of our generation, because yeah. it's so fantastic and it's such a fantasy concept that it it is. There's no generation; it, it's it's across all generations because yeah. it's a fantasy land, just like <clears throat> going to see The Wizard of Oz. Uh, you know, I never really can make that connection. That's really well, and, and Ming in some ways is, is like the yes, exactly, is, or, yeah. like well, Wicked Witch is almost. Truly mean, though. He yeah, well, because the Wizard of Oz was a nice guy behind a curtain. But yeah. the Wicked yeah. Witch, he's more like the, I think of him more like the Wicked Witch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, exactly. That's, that's interesting. You and your yeah. little yeah. puppy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's funny how so many people rediscovered that film recent in, within the last few years. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the great things is Sam did a couple of movies uh, Ted. called Ted, oh, the Ted yeah. movies, yeah. Yeah. which brought it back. Of course. Seth MacFarland has not called me uh, for any yeah. of them. Okay. Seth, what's up? Yeah, really, yeah. Seth. We just had Jason here. He could have. Like, oh no, he he's yeah. he's a Star Trek fan. Yeah. No, no, no. This is this is this is uh, a thing that Seth has some issue. I don't want to get into it, but uh, he could, in fact, put me in his next Ted three. But be that as it may, so when when Sam did the Ted, it brought him back out, sure. and then more people wanted to to get. Were, the, they started watching the movie, the Flash Gordon movie, all over yeah. again. So in a way, thank you, Seth. That's why I'm here yeah. today in Rhode Island. Oh, exactly. that's, awesome. that's terrific. That's, that's terrific. terrific. So other than the Flash, you've done a ton of other things. Do you have a favorite role? I have to say that being able to play Marilyn Monroe in that movie of the week, it was uh, the story of Marilyn Monroe and her romance with Bobby Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But um, but uh, it was amazing to really have a specific character to learn about and walk about and yep. get all the traits as an actor, and then performing I mean, to, to play her most actresses would like to have because she was such an incredibly complicated and bright woman well, with such, so an much icon. Tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. She's such an icon. Absolutely. Such yeah. an icon. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I would say that was that. Okay, yeah. interesting. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that's great. All right, you guys, stay away from guns. Th- th- okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Right. Thank, thank you for sitting down with us. And don't ha- hang out with Harvey Weinstein. Okay? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Me, you know, if he would ask, I would have never. I was like, sure, fine, give me the yeah. job. Nobody <laughs> ever asked me. No one ever freaking asked me. So okay, well. I, I'm one of the sad ones. <laughs> okay. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you so very, much. very much. It was great. Pleasure, really guys. fun. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank really you so much. Take yeah. care. It was great Bye. seeing you. Good to see you. Thank you. How are you guys? Hey. Sam Jones, Flash Gordon here. We're here with Sam. Very Todd and Dave. Yeah. Good Flash to Gordon, see you, Ted, And I'm Ted, Sam. Yeah. yeah. So we're here for Rhode Island Comic Con. Rhode Island yes. Comic Con. Yeah. We, we're here. This is our fifth year. It's not too big. It's not too small. Oh, everyone's usually super engaging Super friendly. I mean, Engaging, yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. Well, we need to do that more. We do. You have, you, 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 no, nowadays, especially nowadays. Yeah. We need yeah. to engage without, um, without breaking people down. Yeah, it's serious. Agreed. Well, that's what these types of shows are all about. It's yeah. just about fun. It's about people what celebrating yeah. the things they love and 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 getting to meet people that they you know, have always wanted to meet. And for us actors, it's an opportunity for us to hear the fan's story, his or her story, how we impacted their lives. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It is, okay. We had talked earlier with yeah. uh, Jason Isaacs. He, oh yeah, yeah. Oh and, God, he's good. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Terrific. I just saw him and, in the green room and, and yeah. again. I saw him in another movie, which I could not recognize him. <laughs> but I saw his eyes because he had a different look and a different yeah. dialect. Yes, yes. 
we, you know, we were saying it's it's for for a lot of people. It's not just about it's not just about getting an autograph on a picture or a poster. It's that just a couple of minutes of interaction, it's engaging. And, it is, and yeah. people like yourself that do a really good job with that. Well, um, thank you. It's just it's you've been terrific. observing me. Yeah, well, you, well we we've, have. we've no, talked. We've been taking you pictures of me. I yeah. had my Flash Gordon poster signed by you. So. Yeah, you, you, you got Did I charge you? Or was it free? Oh no, no, you charged you, you me, charged. but, but I, I didn't wait mind. Wait, wait, did you come up to me with a? Press badge, yes or no? No, no, no. You no, don't play that. Well, of course, you're going to get charged. We don't play that because we I, wanna... I don't mind paying. No, man, no we're we, we're for, hey, we're fans. One, we're fans for first and foremost, and we cool. do this for fun. If no one listened to this, we would do this. We've known each other for 20 years, and just the fact that we all do this show on a weekly basis and talk to each other is is the most fun for us. Whether yeah. 50,000 people are listening or nobody's listening. So, so you do this once a week, the three of you. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Now, e- even if you're not together, we're, you, we don't we're never together. together. We, so we do it remotely. I live in, Seriously. I live yeah. in Westchester, which and is I'm in Massachusetts. outside of New York, and we do it remotely, and we've been doing it. But you're not doing years. it remotely now. You're together. No, we're no, actually, well, a couple well, times well, a year. Well, because you're here. So it's a rarity. So, yeah, yes. it's a rarity yeah. that we actually this do. It's one of the few times a year we all get together. Fire away with the questions, man. I Talk about anything except uh, comic cons, a uh, personal life, and the movie business. But okay, go ahead. Great. <laughs> that's okay. What so kind of car do you drive, Sam? <laughs> just a, just a, is that funny? <laughs> okay. Let me ask you a question. What, what yeah. has been one of one of the most interesting or meaningful a fan coming up to you and how you have sort of uh, helped touch you know their lives? Like, yeah, uh, I'm not, you can't make this stuff up. You know, it's usually entertainment based. Hey, Sam, it's great when I was young, man. You, I looked up to you. You, you influenced me. But now, that, since uh, I've been doing more, I started out the last 20 years, one a year. Yeah. And then I, I kind of figured out a business model and really to make it effective. And three years ago, it was 12. Last year, 30. This wow. year, about 42. Wow. Really? Wow. Because I figured it out. So, getting back to your specific question, uh, traveling more, now I really get to hear the relevant, viable, meaningful, meaningful stories other than entertainment-based. Mm-hmm. So it usually starts out like this. There's a 40-year-old man with a great wife. Three kids come up to my table, and as soon as his wife and kids walk away, he'll say, Sam, uh, when I was 12 years old, you know, I, I, I used to watch your VHS, and it was kind of cool. It was fun. And then uh, about a year later, I don't know what happened, but my parents became very abusive. So at the age of 13, I walked in my bedroom to commit suicide. And I heard this voice say, hey, put that, uh, put that VHS back in of that superhero guy, Flash Gordon. And Sam, I put the movie back in. You not only gave me hope, you gave me value to carry on in life. Really? I went, wow. Whoa. Powerful. So, I mean, you know, the hair should be yeah, raised on you. And, yeah. the tears <laughs> should, and the tears start to roll. And, I, yeah. and that's what, I, I mean, it's just, come on. It's a game changer. Yeah. It, you hear all these athletes and actors say, oh, I'm not a role model. Well, let me tell you something. Whether we like it or not, yeah. we, we better be very careful what we say and what yeah. we do. Absolutely. Because we are saving lives. Yeah. Or <laughs> we're not. Or it's the other end. Right, yeah. I mean, all he needed was something yeah. uh, to lift it. So here's the significance. We're not saving a life here. Remember. He was 13, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at a 40-year-old man yeah. with a wife and three kids. You they would be non-existent. That's right. Yeah. Lives, yeah. Come on. And this is the, I mean, going Come back on, to the man. earliest days of the cinema, this is, yeah. this is people step out of their lives for just a few moments. Yes. You know, it's, just, it's, it's a departure from their life, and it's, it's, it's other things, other experiences, whatever, but it becomes part of them. And, boy, yeah. that's profound. That, yeah. that is amazing. I, to I, yeah. think of the, you it's know. a tearjerker, but yeah. it's, it's, wow. Yeah. It's so, yeah, we have to be very careful. I'm yeah. a big belie- uh, believer in, in especially the Old Testament. I love Pro- the book of Proverbs yeah. Yeah. because it, there's no gray area in Proverbs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's basically, hey, if you make this choice, you're a wise man yeah. or a wise woman. If you yeah. make this choice over here, you're acting like a yeah. fool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we need to be very careful nowadays, especially yeah. especially yeah. when, all you know, I mean, come on, frustration, anger, anxiety, stress. A lot of anger nowadays in America. Sure. Yep. And my wife, my wife really summed it up. She said we should never open our mouth unless it's three things. Number one, is it truth? Number two, is it necessary? Number three, is it kind? Even if we have to fire a staff member, 
Why can't we just say, hey, you know what? It's not working out right now, but you know what? I'm going to make some calls, and I know you're going to get placed in a position where you're going to be a major blessing to everybody, as opposed to get out of here. Come on. we got to get over ourselves and this madness of uh, anger and just putting people down. It's it's not working. It will never work. Yeah. It will never work. Absolutely right. I wish, you know, there's some people don't subscribe to that philosophy but more and more people do i think i think we live in a time where you know there's more access to people like yourselves with these shows like you said you did 42 you know 10 years ago there weren't that many and i think you know people are seeing you guys not only on the screen and and to have these like we said these meaningful interactions whether it's 10 seconds or a minute or or 10 minutes and yeah. it, it means a lot to them i mean you know people want to step outside yeah. their lives like you said so Hey, look, you got the Power There's Rangers the right here. Are you kidding me? Hey, hey, how you doing? Jason. That dude riles up a crowd like no this other guy. guy. This guy's the guy, We've man. Been, he's guys, he's man. the social media uh, guy. We've seen you at so many shows. You you rile up the crowd better than anybody. It's else. amazing. Awesome. I was talking about the other day. I said, it. you know, huh? you, you, you have are. a whole row of Power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. And then this line for the Green Ranger man. who's just working the crowd. And just, it's awesome. I it's awesome it, to see. I love it. I like it's great the, to see you connecting. The, the uh, guys get all pumped up, kind of feed off. No, but that's what we were just energy. saying because, feed off you the know, energy. People, guys like you connect with your fans, and that's what people come to. It's not and, just an autograph. It's, they pay some money. It's a, a little bit of a yeah. connection, and people like you and, you and Sam are able to do that, and yeah. people walk away feeling really good about, about the interaction. I think that, that's yeah. the idea, right? Yeah, he's got it. Jason has a man, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, we see it. Oh, we he, see it. He it's, comes it's, out it's, there. And the first thing, when he enters his booth, all you hear are the shouts and the cheers, man. It's we, we've seen this. It's like we're, you're at a stadium. You know, we're we're you know? a little too old to be Power Rangers fans. Yeah. No so we, we can see this as a phenomenon, you know, just watching it from yeah. a, a, you know, kind of I'm a sociological thing. And it's just amazing to see it. Well, and, you, and, uh, I appreciate yeah, and it. Yeah, and it doesn't come without work on your part. That's yeah. clear. Well, thank you. I think it's so. one, of the, one of the things we've done so many shows together and like we talked about. Fans are happy. This is a whole the comic Comic Con place. Got to be where you know a happy thing where they get to see your 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 uh, stars, your yep. you know, your, your heroes, stars. heroes. Some people, really, heroes. these, these heroes. you know who changed your life, Sam. Just and how we impacted story. their lives, yes. man. You know, yeah. Yeah. really. Yeah. A lot of times we don't know what they're going through. You know, we were talking about it earlier. We don't know what they're going through at a certain time, and all of a sudden they they, they turn. Maybe they're they're in an abusive relationship or their parents, yep. and they're changing channels, yep. and they put you on. Yep. And and we give them hope. That's we true. give them hope and value, man. That's true. A lot of people, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, how can a TV show or how can someone on you know TV change your life?" But it's kind of like a song. If we heard a song, it's going to bring you back to the days and the the moments Absolutely. of what you heard. Yep. Regardless if it's someone's yeah. that passed, someone that's happy, it's going to bring you back to that childhood. And that's what happens. Sure. You know, when you see Sam or me, we doesn't matter who you are, how old you are. Comic Con is like geared for everybody. Yep. Even yeah. the little, you know what? Even little kids that don't even know who we are that might not know four and five girls right. but they know all the superheroes dressed around those cosplayers yeah. become the stars that's right, that's yeah. right. right? absolutely so, yeah no, yes. saw, uh, a family bring a little girl she could have been more than my, three or four my. today yep. uh, Sam knows better she, she was you. dressed up as as uh, Frodo from Lord of the Rings and they took her to meet Sean Astin yeah. and her face just lit up I mean yep. it just yeah. even and she probably doesn't even fully understand everything that's going on but yep. she yep. was just having such a good time yep. I cosplay as Batman sometimes little kids walk up to Batman I know can you can, you, can I take a picture I'm like I'm yep. not Batman but you know <laughs> it's, it's them. And, don't and crush it's, the little it, kids <laughs> at least you guys played the character you yeah. didn't but, but yeah but you know awesome. the little kids if, the little kids don't no, and you know everybody who you know cosplays as us or talks about us representing us, and it just you know it keeps things current. And the Comic Con people get to see crisscross fans. You know, you got the older fans to see. You got the younger fans That's from right. Diff Stranger Things. You got all these different fan groups that cross right. the line. They're, oh, I didn't know Sam was yep. there. Let me go check it out. You know, so it's everybody just kind of merging together. And I think that's the the key to the that's Comic-Con. it, man. Yeah? All the different age demographics in the groups. It's amazing. Yeah. Ted. The franchise open up that brand new sort of my children's children's age, you know, yeah. and I know you get you have a huge fan base. So I get these younger kids who maybe didn't see Flash Gordon, but uh, they saw Ted and, yeah, yeah. The, and, and you know, yeah. 13 or 18 or whatever yeah. their age group is. And they'll and and they'll even refer to the movie Flash Gordon. Yeah. They don't remember the name, but they'll say, you know, that that movie that Queen did the soundtrack to. Yeah, the yeah. music. Yeah. They got the music. Yeah. They got the band down, you yeah. know? It really is amazing. 
It is. And we love doing these things. Yeah. We get to travel the world. Yeah. You know, and, and we do these for three reasons only. A lot of actors don't confess this, but here's why. The only reason why actors should do this, number one, please the fans. Number two, please the promoter. Number three, generate as much provision and revenue as you can. Sure. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, took absolutely. my wife and my daughter and my son uh, this year to Scotland, to uh, Ireland, yep. and, and to Germany, and to London. Yep. <laughs> So good. <laughs> it's probably, unbelievable. How many shows a year do you do? You, you're, Man, you do I've probably ton. done, yeah, I've probably done about 40, 40, 42 this year. You know what? Well, tell yeah. them what I, the number I just gave he you. Just said he said 42. 42. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there you go, see? Yep, yeah, about like, that. So. We were talking earlier about like, so the, the fan engagement, and, and it is a, you don't see this, but it's a very different experience with some people. Yeah. And you were two examples, and again, we talked to Jason Isaacs earlier, who's really good, is also really, really good. Yeah. And, it, it, making that connection is just so important. Yeah, it's and having, wonderful. Just giving, you know, having those people walk away yeah. with a two-minute interaction, something they're always going to remember for the rest of their life That's versus right. someone whose head doesn't come up yeah. from signing a thing and then handing it That's back right. across yeah. the way to them. Yeah. I was just and, saying that earlier. There's very there's certain people that I've, I've been doing this for so long, and you know, Sam's always been great to the fans. This is so good to see that. You know, we, you have a lot of people that are on newer shows that might be new to this community, but they do have the head down. And mm-hmm. what happens is they're not going to be around 20, 30 yeah. years later like we're still here, you know, uh, and pleasing yeah. fans. And that's, yeah. I think that's... That's what's important. Just, I don't even know what's going on. I just I love Sam. You got me into this. Yeah. But you know, here, here we love all Sam the other, too. All the other celebrities are sleeping. Yeah. Not you know. Is hey look no for real. Hey you guys are doing an interview. Cool. He's sharing his heart with you all. That's that's that yeah. means yeah. that someone cares. That's sitting in this lobby who's a celebrity sitting on the podcast. And so yeah. I'm glad he brought me in too. You know, you know why I'm here, don't you? No. I was sound. You know why I'm here. I was sound asleep in my room. They came uh, pounding on my door. That's right. Said, wow, yeah. Melody, yeah. Melody, yeah. Melody yeah. earlier. <laughs> she promised. She said. Yeah. I just yeah. came from. She uh, we were celebrating a Frigno's 66th okay. birthday at an Italian restaurant. See, thanks, Lou. Lou's a friend of mine too. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> I, had text, right. yeah. I texted him last night. Either, I, yeah. I texted him last night and said, uh, "Are you out eating?" And he said, "Z z z z," and that was it. Just, uh, <laughs> no, like, get, well, you know. he told me the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But tonight we, we wrapped them up, yeah, about good. 10 of us, that's and good. made it happen. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's yeah. amazing yeah. That I'm able to be here with all these guys, too, like growing up with them and stuff, you know. Like, it's, it's crazy. I talk to my dad, my mom, everybody's just like, oh, you know, it's, it's cool to be in this position that I'm in, you know, and seeing these guys' shows growing up as a kid. I mean, it's like one of those cool, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a cool wow, wow moment. Yeah. And I'm happy to be here, you yeah. know. Let me ask you this. What made the Green Ranger the coolest ranger back then? Because my son watched it. You know, yeah. he was a kid. He was the exact right age. And he just, like, when the Green Ranger showed, that was just it. Yeah. That was just all there was to it. And, and why do you think that caught on the way it did? You know, I'm very I'm very passionate about what I do. Have you guys we told me about the that. lines? Yeah. I, I think the passion kind of, I love kids. I work with kids at karate schools. I had. I think the passion just came through the television. You know, when you could see someone's eyes and know and feel it, you could feel the passion. So I was able to, to reach out to so many people around the world, very limited, very limited, which always makes things popular. You know, you yeah. get a limited brand. Everybody wants it. It's not made any better. All these, like, expensive brands. So leather's the leather. Same yeah. cow's the yeah. cow. But when you have limited stuff, it brands it in a certain way where people want it. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and like with Sam right now, the stuff that he's done and like he was saying with Ted and all that stuff, it's made people look and say, I wonder where I could see this. Then they go back and revisit where that's actually yeah. from. Yeah. So, so the way that's media cool. is. You're right, man. Yeah, the way media is nowadays, I could find it. Back then, I could yeah. not find We didn't have Google. That's, On that's our shows, we didn't right. have Google. We didn't have social media. No, we had nothing. Nothing, yeah. nothing. The other thing, too, one of the things that I've, we've talked about a bit in the podcast, we're now – in the first real generation where we can share with our kids all the stuff we loved yeah. as a kid. Yep. And that, that never happened before. No. You know, Sam, you, your parents couldn't do that. My parents couldn't do that. That's right. Because they could describe movies and TV shows they'd seen, yeah. but they were gone. Yeah. If they, yeah. Unless they were maybe re- repeated at some point or they were Star Trek or I Love Lucy, yeah. you just never saw them again. Yeah. And now well, everything is there. You, when I grew up, we didn't even have remotes. Yeah. We had to get up off the yeah. sofa and turn yeah. the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. the kids should be yeah. like, or how about rolling the window down? You yeah. guys are all, you know, yeah. like, yeah. it's like, what is this? Or, you know, dialing the phone. It's like everybody. Yeah. And, you know, God forbid you lose your cell phone because you haven't got no numbers to nobody. Yeah. 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 It's like, no, no, would no, you accept right. a collect call to, uh, yeah, you know, Jason, know. You, you, Sam. Nailed, you nailed it. Okay. How many people that carry an iPhone have been for a while can actually give you Okay, hopefully their spouse's yeah. number without yeah. looking at the phone or their children or their best friends. 
I can only do my wife. Yep. My children, I can't even tell you my children's I can't either. I, yeah. Yeah. Right now. I, I, Unless yeah. I look at my eyes. You see the name. Yeah. And that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's how technology is, and that's yeah. the reason why I think everything's just so relevant. It's because I can, anything I want, I just go check it out. So, right. you know, when you meet someone and they're so nice to you, yep. you're going to want to go check yeah. their stuff out. Yep. And there's yeah. people that you meet that you have an issue with that you might not want to check their stuff out. But, but I keep things separate. You know, I yeah. met a lot of actors, eh, you know, that I met. But, but to have someone like Sam as far as being an actor and the character he portrays. I, I could vouch it's, for him that yeah. I've seen him with fans. And obviously he's, he, he loves it and I love it, you know. And that, that so. separation it, it also is what makes it, those rare moments of personal contact that much more important to people. Yeah. And again, yeah. they're making the memories that they're going to have. for. You're making yeah. the memories that yeah. they're going to have yeah. forever. Yeah. Which it makes good. them happy. We've got to make them priceless. happy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the, the, they've, they've saved up for a year sometimes just to come to the comic convention. Absolutely. To, yeah. to see Jason, to see yeah. me, whatever. And they come to our table. I hear some of the fans won't even, they can't even come up to, some of the actors yeah. won't let them come up. I've to heard them. that. Yeah. It's yeah. mainly probably yeah. representation. Yeah, yeah. Don't let them come to the yeah. table to even shake a hand. Yeah. So they saved for a year. They're going to see Jason. They're going to see me. Their, their moment has come. Our job is to make sure we facilitate their needs, yeah. you know. Yeah. Just let them know, thank them for coming, and, and to hear their story, Yeah, how we yeah. impacted their lives. It, yeah. it is great to hear yeah. about that from your perspective because yeah. that, it is, you know, like I said, we, we're seeing it from the other side, yeah. and, we, we, you know, we talk to different fans and ask why they come here and whatnot. But that's, it, I tell you, it, it says a lot for you guys that you think about, think that much about sure. that. It's important. Now, sometimes the lines are really long, so when they go to tell us the story, we went, okay, yeah. give me the short version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the short that's version. True, that's true. I mean, yeah. we, we do got to yeah. balance you know, it a little we've bit. We've been a line behind that person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but I, yeah. I feel like Sam was saying with, with some people don't shake hands and stuff, I always feel like my managers and my agents and my representation – works for me yeah, so amen I'm the to boss. That. good yeah. for so, you you know what, you know what jason saying? like that's good to hear you're one of the yeah. few yeah. Yeah. telling you yeah good on you yeah, no, that yeah. is really yeah. that, i'm not tickling your ear no, right no, no. Now. what i'm that saying is good is, to hear man and, well it's that a, is good it's to hear a good guy bad guy hey it's my representation yeah. my manager we're in charge he's he right on good for you let man. me tell you how it goes down. that's a rarity in the business what he just said it's a rarity and then the and the celebrity will be like no no i said it's okay i can i can say something some of them are a little you know overzealous of course Daryl, you had a question. Yeah, I was. I was going to say. So, Sam, you've you've gone through this. You've seen parents bringing their kids, yeah. probably to meet you. Yeah. But I think the same thing is happening now with Power Rangers, yeah. right? Are are the original you know generation of fans? Are they starting to have families yeah. of their own? And well, I've been them? so current with so many different stuff, and I'm sure he, Sam's going to experience too with Ted. You're grabbing a different audience that might not have before. So, you know, you have the mom that grew up, loved you, but their daughter was like, oh, I love you. And then the little kid's like, I don't know, but I love Ted. Mm -hmm. I don't watch Power, but I saw the new movie, you know. So you have these generations of fans, which is like different levels. And they're looking up to you. And they're looking up to you. So, you know, it's one of those things, like he was saying, that Comic-Cons are somewhere where people go and make the choice, like I skydive. I do all this stuff. I awesome. base jump. That's like my. It's kind of weird. That's You're like a base jumper, man. Yeah. yeah that's like. Would, let's go did, do it did, right did now. Did you ever Come hook on. up with, with Don yeah. Swayze and do that stuff it's with a Don? Tall Swayze. building. No, let's no. go. Yeah, because you know Patrick's yeah, brother yeah, did yeah. that for yeah. years. Yeah, no, but I probably well, I jumped with them in Paris because in Paris, California, there was a lot of people that went over there. Even Chuck, I jumped on one of Chuck Norris's jumps when I was going over there, and uh, you know Chuck Norris so cool he didn't need a parachute. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was, but, uh, for that. I was like, "What? Chuck Norris has a parachute? What the heck is going on over here?" But um, but no. But certain people have certain things that they outlets, and this is an outlet where they do save up all the time and yeah. they do want to meet. You know, and it's one of those things where, hey, it's you know, high five, do whatever you want. Take, I mean, I've all social media is big, yeah, so if people want to take a picture, where and take a video, to, where are you up to me. now? Well. You know, the reaches are a lot different than anything yes, else because yeah. people are lazy to click. But yeah. I'll reach anywhere from 15 to 20 million a week through Instagram, really? Facebook, wow. and everything Can else. You, I would do a lot of reaches. Well, when you, when you, <laughs> you send me the link. you say 5 50 million, yeah. 5 uh, Anywhere, in, not 5 but Fif- anywhere from 15 to 20 still million. still gigantic. Yeah. So, That's amazing. But, uh, and you know what's the, the key about social media or anything? It's not necessarily how many likes or who you have. It's how many engages yes. you yes. have. Absolutely. Absolutely. How many you people are talking about you your page. You nailed it, man. And yeah. that's one of those things where, you know, if you deny no pictures, no this, how are you going to live in the social media world? Yeah. You have nothing to tag. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, tag it. Yeah, yeah cool. Tag me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, so, and, and right now with us, I mean, we, you know, uh, Power Ranger was number one kid show in the world before 
Google and Instagram. Yes. You know yep. what I mean? So everyone's like, well, it's like, look, if Jesus can FaceTime, he would. He wouldn't have to walk through all this. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. If you use it for the good, then you're yes. great. And then social media can be used as bad, bullying, sure. and all that other stuff. But sure, yeah. we choose to use it for the good, and that's the reason why we're here, I guess. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Absolutely. wonderful, yeah. man. Cool. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, I appreciate wow. you bringing so, it. No, so you're up yeah, to the yeah, top. Let me tell you. As you know, uh, if you're 15 to 20 million, it's it's in, it's huge. Yeah. Now, if you get to the top three, I remember Vin uh, Vin Diesel is 101 million. Yeah. I think The Rock is 90 million. Yeah. Wow. But if you're 15 to 20 million, man, that's but, it. The, the, but the, you're giving the, them relevant, yeah, viable, really good yeah. uh, things of integrity. You're not just yeah. throwing a bunch of crap no, out no, there. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I keep things positive, man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Amen. If you want to hear about me and Sam's bad stories, then grab a <laughs> box of Kleenex and get ready for that because you all don't want to hear that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you, we, we all we all been through dark places. But a good scenario, in a nutshell. When the caterpillar crawls, he gets locked in a cocoon. He hates being locked up. It's a dark place. He doesn't like it, but he grows to become a butterfly. So the dark places that you yeah. go end up blossoming you into an awesome butterfly. Amen. You know Amen. what I mean? Amen. So, like, you can grow and be blessed in a dark time. And we've all, I'm sure, had those. We just choose right now that it's a positive. People want to see it. It's like yeah, And it's positive. needed. Yes. It's needed. Yes. For sure. It's when enough everybody's enough just, yeah, everybody's so that. negative. It's, yeah. it's time, man, yeah. to yeah. build Republic, people up. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah we got to build people <laughs> yeah. up, man. Yeah. I'm joking. No, Let's say that again. Say I said that. he's a big Republican. I'm kidding. He's, it, was it was a joke. You know what? In, inside joke. You asked me what party I belong to. I'm not left. I'm not center. I'm not right. I, I belong to the practical thinking. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Practical thinking. Common common sense party. And, yeah. Whatever label you want to give that. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. I hear you. And, and let's build people up. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. give me a label. Let's build people. Absolutely. If that's a label, I'm a builder of people. Yeah. That's what. That's my label. Yeah, we need, we need him yeah. in the office. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree on that. Yep. Good at it. Sam yep. for president. Yeah, I'm all. President. I'm down for that. No, He's got my vote. That. No, that's yeah. what we need yeah. to do. It's true. Yeah. So, it's you true. know, when I'm, all those I'm a when, here. when all those <laughs> yeah. uh, emergencies in Houston, in yep. Florida, and Puerto Rico, did anybody say when they're pulling a hand, a body, a, a living person drowning, and to grab their hand to pull them on the boat? Did they say? Are, are you a Republican? Are you a, No, they did not. No. They said, no. brother, sister, come yeah, here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's true. Yep. Come on. And then my house is right in the middle of that Houston. I was in King. Oh, is that right? Oh, really? So my house is fine, but my whole neighborhood was destroyed. Yeah. Wow. And so uh, you can see that. You can see people getting together, helping. No matter yeah. if you're black, don't matter if you're white, don't matter what color it is, that's don't right. matter if you're Democrat or Republican, that's they're there right. to help. And that's what I think the world is missing. Yeah. There's yes. too many this side, that side, yeah, yeah. what we're doing. Too many labels I'm neutral. And not enough My solutions. Instagram yeah. is so neutral. And that's not just a, yeah. a, the truthful answer. That's such a great neutral answer, but that's the truth. Yes. And that's what gets you out of, well, about this and about that. You know, I'm from Texas, so, you know, Astros, but I'm also from Los Angeles. So people <laughs> ask me, and I just say, Great ball game. What do you yeah. you know, uh, from L.A. and you, Astros? Good, you, you, you know. You got like, a mind for politics. You do. I, I don't know. You I, know, it's one of those things. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Michael Jordan had the greatest answer. You know, because he sells shoes. Sure. Billions of dollars worth of shoes, right? So somebody got onto him about whatever side, left or right, and and he said, "What? Well, um, what what party do you take?" And you know what he said. He said, both sides buy shoes. Yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> Come on, so man. True. Come that's on. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Both sides true. buy shoes. Very that's true. right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So. Right, we've Thank taken enough for you guys. We really, we really appreciate, really appreciate yeah, it. I, 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 too, hey, yeah. I appreciate guys like this that like, I was just talking earlier. When they grab you. And say, hey, come here and share share something. I appreciate that. Most people are, uh, well, we're gonna make this interview about me and make it. That's what I like about this, and I always liked about Sam is like people. That's what we do. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I owe you next time when I say, hey, it's oh, wonderful. Sam, man. Yeah. It's one of you stopped in like Thank this, you, man. man. Good Thank for you. you. I appreciate it. Good. Hello, everybody. Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to the regular Joe's podcast. You that's know what all. time it is? Morphin time. Yeah. So that just happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2017 that was a lot of fun 2018 was another uh dry spell uh, we did get one interview so uh let's check that out there's been 150 people in this lobby at times tonight exactly yeah. it's died <laughs> and, down a little now lots but, of crazy um, costumes yeah. and all that kind of fun stuff but yeah, yeah. not so, conducive to nice. interviewing no not at all yeah but we're having a good time and that's yeah. all that matters you guys yeah. in it yes hey What's going on? we're doing a podcast how you doing you want to say hi podcast with me jacqueline grazer awesome Podcast. You guys on Spotify? 
We are. Yes. We're on everything. <laughs> you want to record for a minute? Say hello. Yeah, sit down, sit down, sit down. Yeah. Uh, no, no, just, okay. just yeah. for a minute. Move it's over, all good. Move yeah. Move over. yeah. Okay, so it was an awesome movie. Thank you. Someone give Todd, you don't need to talk. Okay. Todd, come on. Here, here you go. Everybody's I got a mic. Like Todd now. needs to talk. Talk. So talk to us about what it was like being part of that movie. It was, the movie was awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, the connections between us all were really amazing. We all, we all had instant chemistry with each other. We all loved each other at, at first sight. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I love at no, first we, sight. We all loved each other. So and, if you yeah. don't mind me asking, how old are you guys now? I'm 15. <laughs> so and like, how old were you when you made the movie? Nine. No, he, no, he's, no. He's, he's 15 too. I'm 15. Okay. I was 12 when I made we the 13. movie. Okay. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I was we were 13. Good. I 12 turned 13. I was 13. Uh-huh. Okay. He's the youngest of us all. <laughs> so it was scary to watch, but was it scary to film, or was it because it was a movie set, it was like, let's... Um, well, I always knew that it was make-believe, you know, that we were doing this for money, and that uh, That's it, was, we it was, for. yeah, it was pretend. So I could, you know, I could look over my shoulder and see a camera anytime, and I knew Bill <coughs> uh, Skarsgård personally. I met up at the table reading. He was. Oh, he's so a great it wasn't guy. as scary because you kind of knew yeah, the guy in real yeah. life. Yeah. And then after exactly. a take, he'd be like, "Hey, Andy, was that good? Was that good?" And I'd be like, "Oh, yeah, he's still he's still a human being." <laughs> Had you seen the, any of the the previous incarnations of it, the TV series, or? or yeah, any, yeah, I think we both saw the miniseries. Yeah, um, I saw it. But we didn't read the book, which is not good. But <laughs> I, read, I, read, I read excerpts from the book. Yeah. So it's yeah, good because you were young and it would give you nightmares. That's good. Exactly. Also, it's very, very long. It is very, very, it is very, very long. Quite monotonous, but, it, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's very good because Stephen King is a mastermind prodigy genius. He, he is phenomenal. Yeah. I just gave like three synonyms so you guys can work with those. <laughs> you guys can edit or edit. So do you guys do a lot of conventions? Have you done this kind of stuff before <laughs> my, I think it's my sixth. Oh, really? Sixth? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done a few. How has this show been for you guys? Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. It's fun. This is one of our favorite shows. We've done this. This is our sixth year that we've come to this show. Where are you guys from? New York City and Massachusetts. I'm on Long Island. He's in Westchester and he's in Massachusetts. Yeah. Ah. So we we do this podcast every week. Oh, and uh, we've How been you guys friends like it? for 20 years. So. Oh, you guys cool. like it a lot? Or you, yeah, you know, you this is like our favorite show that we come small, to every year. It's got a lot of good guests. It's well run. They do a good job with these. Yeah, You've met a lot of cool people, I guess, today? Yeah, I met I met Ben Margera yesterday. He's I'm, I'm a huge fan of him. I love him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um... Are there any other guests that here that you're excited to meet? I, we want to meet Tim Curry. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah, would be yeah, great. Yeah, for, yeah, sure. for sure. Cool. And I want to meet Keith He's Sutherland. the OG. <laughs> Who? Keith Sutherland. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. We, saw we, him we saw him today, but we didn't meet oh, him. Yeah. I sat behind him on a plane one time, and, and I, I kicked a seat or something, or I was whispering really loud. He was like, dude, you got to stop talking. And then <laughs> you, don't like, want, <laughs> you don't want Jack Bauer to be mad at you. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. You know, he may uh, do something extreme. We met Hayden Christensen today. That was cool. Little Italy? Little Italy. Yeah. So we kind of we, we so we watched Little Italy on the plane, and I'm sorry, Hayden Christensen, if you're listening to this, but it was kind of a bad movie. <laughs> but no, it's like an inside really. joke now because I'm like Hayden Christensen from, from Little Italy. It's funny. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's well, cool. I think of him from Star Wars, but you guys are a little young, maybe for that. I do too. Yeah, wow. Of course, yeah. I do. Yeah. Okay. I guess immediately I think of him for yeah, that. But cool. I mean, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, we totally appreciate you guys. Yeah, we don't want to keep you guys up. We, we appreciate you guys stopping to talk gonna, to us. You guys are signing at the show tomorrow? Yes. yes. Oh, we'll awesome. be here till we'll we'll 3. Have a great show. We yeah, really it was really nice it. talking to you guys. Time. Yeah, you yeah. too. Thank you. Thank Take you so care. Much. All right, and here we are with the final year of interviews from 2019. Let's go back to the Omni Providence for some more great interviews. Come and say hi. We're, We're doing a podcast. Do you like podcasts at all? Hello, regular Joe. This is Beverly D'Angelo, and I want to say hello to everybody on the podcast. But where? Who am I talking to? Everybody. You're everybody talking, everybody, everybody on the internet. Yes, I'm yeah. here at the Rhode Island Comic Con convention. I'm having a great time, and you know why? It's because the 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 fans yes. of the vacation movies are really good people. They're nice people. They're mentally stable. You know, so all the incoming is very, very cool. And I'm having a great time. There's my friend Alex. Oh, your, your voice makes me melt. I'm sorry. So I know we're supposed to be mentally stable. And you want to hear something bizarre? I have never booked a commercial. I've never booked... Uh, I, I've done some voiceovers, but listen to this. Like, insurance for you. Don't you want to be safe? I want you to be safe. Call Allstate. Like, why aren't I, you know what I mean? Or like, I don't know. Wait a minute, You're the wait, best. A minute wait a minute. Lima beans, high in vitamin C. Get some today. You know what I mean? 
Okay. Talk to you later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I didn't hear a word of that. I didn't I'm hear a word she was saying. When you heard it, it's awesome. Okay, her, her, her voice just, oh, my gosh. So, oh, that's terrific. <laughs> It is All a right. little. It is a little noisy. Oh, in here, here Jonas! Wait, here comes Jonas. Jonas. And Ethan oh. Peck. Yeah. Wait a second. Jonas. Jonas. Whoa, Ethan whoa, Peck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> How you doing? You, you guys are crossing the streams. You can't cross the streams. <laughs> Star cross, Trek cross. and Star Wars crossing the streams. How you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. Do you have two seconds to sit down and talk to us? Fortunately, I have to get going. But okay. Uh, but guys, I see you're doing great work here. You have a little mixer there. <laughs> yeah, we got no, the whole thing going. Your can, audience is enjoying this. Can, can you give us one Chewbacca growl? Well, I shouldn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is already more action than we had last year on yeah. the movie, so. <laughs> That's. Uh, we didn't even talk to, about so, meeting him earlier in the so day. So. He, he just, he just translated to you're listening to the regular shows. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. You, got, you guys didn't hear it, but, but Beverly D'Angelo just did a commercial for you. So when oh, you hear it back terrific. again, that she did oh, a great that's, drop that's in for you. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait so, to hear it. <laughs> I know. We couldn't, it's, it's tough to hear around here. So now while we got Jonas, Ethan took off. We met both of them well, earlier, well, too. I don't know if everyone even knows. So, so who was that? And, uh, and, and I'm not going to butcher his last name, but it was Jonas, the guy that's played Chewbacca in the last four Star Wars movies. Yes, and yeah. he took over from Peter Mayhew. Um, and and he 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 was very. He gave us a couple minutes, a couple yes. uh, seconds here, which was nice of him. Yeah. So you guys ran into him earlier today. We met him earlier I today. Met him earlier so today, because one of the 19 posters I had signed was I had him sign a solo poster. Oh, um, okay. and he does a really cool signature because he draws in a little Chewbacca head okay? on the end of it. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, um, one of the things when we were in, when Barry was in line to see him, he did one of the coolest things that I've ever seen somebody do at one of these shows. He actually, a woman was there. She got something signed. She said her son couldn't come for whatever reason, and she faced let him, had him FaceTime with her son right oh, at the that's table. Great. Yeah, and it, it was, was awesome. Just, Made Chewbacca noises, and, and he was it, explaining it was who he was. Because explaining because the, the kid didn't know. The kid was expecting <laughs> to see Chewbacca. <laughs> yes, exactly. And he explained the. Uh, yeah, but it was uh, it was very very cute and very cool. Now you mentioned before the premium experience, and this was something I'd never seen before. But at his table, he was actually ch- charging more for what they called the premium autograph, which I have not seen anybody do before. And I'm wondering if this is going to become a new thing. Well, we we see that in the send-ins. I mean, it where they charge it, different for an eight by ten as I've opposed just never to a poster. Heard it referred to as a premium. Yeah. So that's, well, that's I, with, I, I with a little drawing that goes it. with it, or no? It was if you had him sign an eight by ten photo, it was a regular regular price autograph if you had him sign memorabilia which they listed as action figures posters or prop replicas then that was a slightly higher price point but that so is what's going get, on in star wars so this yeah. is like, autographs they're giving you a photo you're getting a photo and a, and a signature on the photo so they're providing a photo to you but it costs more to not provide have them provide <laughs> right. a photo. I, I think this right. is all, exactly. all about the resale you're, value yeah. on ebay bad yeah. mouthing so. uh, the dude yeah. Yeah. I just want to add to this podcast that I truly love anybody who loves me. That's for real. So if you're listening in to the regular Joe's podcast, know that this is Beverly D'Angelo sending love out for anybody who loves me and who loves the regular Joe's podcast. It's Anthony Michael Hall, folks, right over there. So. He's, Which you uh, can't harass him. Yeah. If he harasses us, uh, it's right. okay. He comes by like Beverly did, but he's hey, not Anthony going. Hey. How you doing? What's up, man? We're, we're, we're recording a, po- a with podcast. Bever- Beverly D'Angelo just came and talked to us. <laughs> you want to say hi? Yeah. Just don't say we harassed anybody. Yeah. Say again? <laughs> don't say we harassed any- you at all. because These guys young. are criminals. <laughs> I'll never work with them again. <laughs> and it's great to be here on the Regular Joe's podcast. Because awesome. aren't we all Regular Joe's? God bless, guys. Yeah, good. Thank you. Awesome. Good Thank you. All right, two See, cast members this of is vacation. Two cast members from vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you think we get Chevy? I don't know. We're, we're going for the. <laughs> it's Tim Rose. Hey, what's up, Tim? Hey. We were just talking about you. We were just talking about meeting you earlier today. Yeah. We, we, uh, we are the regular Joe's we, podcast. You signed our friend's poster today, so we were. Oh. Now you see, you signed my poster earlier today. I do these podcasts all the time. Do you? And I think nothing of it. And then I did this one. Went on YouTube. 
And I talked about Akbar's final moment on The Last Jedi. Yeah. Next thing I know, the internet is a light. Okay. <laughs> They're all being abusive to the director. They're, well, we were know, abusive to like... the director before any of this, so don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> not, but not we have our, nothing not... but respect for Admiral Akbar. Of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the Scott Ian, everybody. I would, I would like by. to say about Admiral Akbar that unlike a lot of the other Star Wars characters, the one thing I can claim is I was the only guy who ever did Admiral Ackbar. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's right. That is awesome. There's like ten Boba Fetts from what we see. Yes. yes. Lots of people play exactly. lots of Jeremy characters. Jeremy Bullock is the Boba Jerry Fett. Jeremy Bullock yes. is but Boba there Fett. There are but other yes. people yep. who get the sign because they yep. wore the costume. Yep. That's right. Yep. Jeremy was otherwise engaged. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so. why, why do you think Akbar has become such a beloved character? Um, I, I worked it's at Hasbro. simple because I'm such a fabulous yeah. person. <laughs> it's, it's because of your person. No, I, I mean, they, they think that anybody can go in these characters. But so much of the person that's hidden inside the suit actually does come out through the suit. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That, well said. That, no. You know, someone who's taken over a lot of the things now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has so. been putting a lot of different people in a lot of different characters, yeah. but lost some of that content. You know, I, I worked with Jim Henson for years, so oh. I worked with all the original Muppets. Oh, that's really. Terrific. And I did the new Muppet movies, and I had a very hard time watching, yeah, the characters. Right, right. Because so much, even something as simple as a Muppet, so much of that person is the person behind the puppet. <laughs> yeah. oh, wonderful. 100%. Absolutely, yeah. No, yeah. that's awesome. That's great. We appreciate you. We, we love Akbar. Thank you for... Our, you told us a, a nice little interesting Can I uh, tell anecdote. you about my proudest moment as Akbar? Oh, yes, Absolutely. Definitely. Yes, please. Okay, it's Akbar's final shot in Return of the Jedi. We'd done the whole battle against the Death Star, and Richard Markman came in. He said, right, we just want to shoot a quick bit with everybody... We want everybody celebrating because we've won the battle and all that. Now, I was just the right age that at that time, I came this close to being drafted to Vietnam. So I had very strong feelings about battles and war yeah. and good things and bad things. And I believe that war is something that we can be proud of, but not something we celebrate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Fair <laughs> if enough. If you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. So he wanted me to do this shot where we've won the war, and he wanted Akbar to jump out of his chair and go dancing around the room. <laughs> and when they turned over the camera, I thought about all of our guys who had died, Yeah. all of the guys on the Death Star who was just trying to feed their family but just happened to yep. be on that side of yeah, things yeah, yeah. and got blown up when that happened. And the weight of the whole thing just sort of pushed the character down into his chair. Yeah. And Richard came in and he said, I told you I wanted you to dance up and celebrate. And I said, you got the performance that Akbar wanted to do. If you want somebody to dance up and celebrate, you can put somebody else in the costume. Bravo. Wow. Well awesome. And I'm so proud of the fact that they left yeah, well, yeah. I did in the movie and didn't put somebody in just so they could oh. get out of and dancing around they like had, that. I'm sure that they realized it was the right take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, when yeah. they saw it, they realized that was good and they yeah. left it in. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely what a, what a leader would do, a general would yes. do. Feel yep. the weight of True leader. those who yep. sacrificed. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. But back in those days, we had a lot more input and influence and things than... Mm. We do now. Yep. So, so. Now, did you also play additional Mon Calamari uh, in Return of the Jedi as no, well? No, Rogue One. I was uh, another Mon oh, Calamari. Okay. So, so yep. I was Sholan. <laughs> okay. It was funny because he was meant to be from the north of the planet. So yeah. it was like white Hence with the blue different eyes. color, yeah. yes. Fabulous eyes. I really yep. love the eyes of the character. But when we were filming it, he didn't get a name until uh, Tops had his photographs for celebration. And they asked Disney, what's his name? And they went, oh, uh, um, 
It's Showland because while we were filming, we all just had serial numbers. Oh, really? And it was quite hard because you had the heads and the transmitter for each character to make the heads operate. And you had to keep the two together to know which one did what. Right. And it was hard keeping track of all the numbers. So what I signed for Showland on the pictures, my name was actually Milky Bar. Because <laughs> 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 in England, they had the Milky Bar kid, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's famous great. commercial. That's great. So that, that was his actual name on set. And then he got the Showland when they needed to have a name for the... <laughs> When you're wearing all that prosthetic, how much of it is you acting the prosthetic and how much is the remote control people? What, what do you have control of inside the suit and what do they have control of? Um, they operated all the facial features and then I did the body movements to go along yep. with it. The mouth opening and closing is you? In the original Akbar, the close-up, the one that does most of the dialogue, was a Muppet-style hand puppet. Really? Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Because in those days... Um, we would do full body suits for establishing shots, but because there was so little space, it was uh, hard to put yeah. many mechanics in there. The technology's gotten better over the years too. Yeah, yeah. So, we, so we did the double. We did half body double. There was a, a hand puppet, so I was inside the chest and then operating the mouth with my hand. Oh, wow, great. So the famous line, was that you in the suit or was that you a hand puppet? A hand puppet. Yeah. Really? Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, I did see, such a good I, job. Nobody knows. You did fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but now it's a um, you know carbon fiber helmet and thirty eight servos, so it's like yep. having your head inside of a cage full of budgies, all chirping away. <laughs> yeah. While you're trying to listen to the director through this earpiece and listen to the guy running your head through this earpiece, and wow. Yeah, it's it's uh, it sounds like it's gotten a lot more complicated. It is. Yeah. But what I love about the characters is the, I mean, even the original Akbar, when I was in the full body suit talking about the forthcoming attack, Mike Quinn, who's nine numb, was laying on the floor operating the cable controls for my mouth sink. Because we'd oh. always worked at Muppets. Yep. And at Muppets, with the Dark Crystal characters, it could be up to six people operating a character all at once. So it's like, well, who should be signing for this character? Because there were six people doing it. But what was wonderful about the characters is when you start with one of these animatronic figures, you have to do it by numbers. Okay, when I say this, the eyebrows have to do that, and the cheeks have to do that, and the lips have to do that. But very quickly, the six people become one and you can start ad-libbing and you can just say whatever you want to and all six people know exactly who this character is and what this character mm. would do in that situation and that is when the real magic starts to happen you know because effectively that character takes on his own life and that doesn't happen with CG because, you know, that's happening yeah. right yeah. there yeah. on exactly. set. That's so true. Yeah. And if the actor you're acting with does something different, you can react to them and your character stays totally alive because everybody knows exactly what to do in that situation. So. I can relate to that because I've played in bands all my life. And when you start playing in a band, it's all new and everybody's fe mm -hmm. feeling each other out. But the more you get used to each other, you can start improvising in ways and you can predict what the other guy's going to do. And it, it just makes... A yeah. world of difference in and the it's performance. That, that working together. Yeah, it's that's a, great. <laughs> yep. It's like a religious experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Have you been to or heard about the museum in New York where they have the Home Muppet exhibit, the Jim Henson exhibit? I haven't been to it. Yeah, no. it's, it's wonderful. If you ever get the opportunity, it's at the Museum of a Moving Image in, uh, I think it's Brooklyn, right, Dave? Yeah. It's oh, in Queens. Oh, it's in Queens. But yeah, Jim we had Henson, one of those in London, but it, it shut down. Jim Henson donated a very large portion of all the uh, puppets. And oh, they've lovely. all been restored, and it's, it's wonderful to walk through. It's really cool. Yeah, he was the days of, I describe him as the days of King Arthur's court. Because mm. mm. Jim, you know, most bosses tell you what to do, and Jim would ask you what you would do. Really? And he was really brilliant that way, yeah. because everybody has ideas, and he would take all of those ideas and go, don't have the money for that one. That would take too much time, but that sounds really good. And he would, he would synthesize the whole thing together. But everybody was involved in that. You know, we, 
we, I describe it as he took a, a load of nerds, <laughs> people who didn't really fit in any place else, and he gave us a playpen to play in. And we rewarded him by making him a multimillionaire. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it was a good trade-off for everybody. Oh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. That's it awesome. Well, great. We thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, yeah, we totally appreciate it. A couple minutes of your awesome. time. It was awesome. We're big Star Wars fans and big fans of the characters. So. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. the man. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. So much. Have a great really night. appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. Excellent. Excellent. So, And then we had a couple of margaritas. A and couple of margaritas. Came back here and sat in the lobby for an hour and never turned the recorders on because our guest from last night, Tim Rose, came back. And we had our own private show with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Amazing. He talked to he us for an hour. Basically told us every anecdote he has. Actually, I wouldn't even Probably say not. He, not even. He no. probably didn't hit the tip From of the iceberg, Star Wars to Howard the Duck. All the things that we, would, we could never record, but it was still awesome to listen to it. The guy has had an incredible career. Yeah. Muppets and, and, yeah. and Howard the Duck. He was Howard the Duck. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it just, it's, it's. Just was really cool. I had a good time. He's a great guy. Yeah, really. And and, uh, and then he introduced us, us to one of his friends. Yeah, and, and I think we'd still be talking to him and not recording if Mike Quinn hadn't have come by. But then Mike Quinn, who played Nine Numb on in Star Wars and has done a million other amazing things, yes, came yep. by and he sat down and recorded with us. So yeah, and uh, I guess we can just Ooh. jump right into that interview right here. There you go. Uh, the regular Joe's podcast. Yes, the regular Joe's podcast. The regular Joe. We are huge Star Wars fans. Ah, oh, brilliant. Me so too. We, uh, well, <laughs> I would hope so. Me too. So, Mike Quinn, correct? Correct. All okay. day, all night. So, for the few of our listeners that don't know who you are or what you've done, can you just give us like the oh, high level? Okay. Yeah, I'm a puppeteer, creature performer, actor, producer, director, writer. Uh, animator. I don't know what else I've Is done. That I can't all? remember. That's all. <laughs> Slacker. Um, I uh, eat food and I okay. breathe and uh, walk. And yes, um, uh, what else have I done? I am a Muppet performer. I uh, work on Star Wars and uh, I'm known for the character Nine Numb. Nine uh, Numb. So that kind of, yeah. That a- amazing. And Nine Numb has, has had a resurgence in the um, new trilogy, which is great to see. He's around. Yeah. He's around in these. He's one of the few surviving rebel. Yeah. Uh, that is <laughs> true. Yes. Yeah. Which uh, is awesome. I'm which sure is... you can't tell us anything, so we won't ask, but it's exciting to know that, that you've been on set and yeah, doing things. He's, he's, uh, he made it onto the Falcon at the end of The Last Jedi. Yeah. Which is yes. yep. was awesome. Like, which was great. Seven or eight or nine of us or something. That, yep. You know, the original that made it on there, which is amazing. Only because I think they forgot to kill me off. <laughs> so, well, they killed just about everybody else. Also. And they, they forgot about me. It's like, oh, we're going to have to put him on the Falcon. At the, okay, let's get him in there. And we so, were, yeah. We were just talking to Tim about how Akbar <laughs> went out. Yeah, that yeah. was swift. Yes, it was. Swift and harsh. And so. uns- unceremonial. <laughs> we missed, we missed uh, Akbar. Yes. And, you know, I assisted Tim with Akbar in Return of the Jedi. Right. So, yep. so yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's an old friend of mine now. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, Nine Numb lives. It's incredible. How did that happen? Well, we're happy that it did. <laughs> so, do you have a favorite story, or is there something w- that you or know, a favorite moment? Because yeah. I mean, you guys blew up the second Death Star, and, <laughs> you, and, and you, Lando. you and Lando did, were there. We and yep. did a favorite moment, a story. I have so many, and I can't like right now. It's what is it? <laughs> Night time. It's late. It's it is late here. Any, Rhode Island I have, Comic Con. I have loads of stories, and I, yeah, it's like, where do I begin? I mean, that's the thing. So I don't know. Yeah. No, okay. I mean, well, it was. Yeah, I can certainly say that it was uh, uh, just amazing. And Billy D. Williams was really great to me when we did the original scene, and um, George Lucas actually directed that uh, scene with the. Uh, Millennium Falcon in the cockpit. Oh wow! Um, oh. Which people—it's not really documented, but yeah. they were running a bit behind on the film at that time. And Richard Marquand was uh, went on to film the uh, uh, um, what is it? The, the Rancor uh, scenes, I think, on stage five or something. So they sort of double uh, shot. So George Lucas directed the cockpit scenes. Uh, with the in the with the Falcon. So, oh, that's great. So uh, people don't really know. So that. you were directed by oh, the yeah. maker yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I remember uh, showing up um, the morning of the shoot, and the, you know I was I had my my pages of my script, 
And of course, the script says, you know, nine num chatters a liquid alien language, and then Lando <laughs> had his lines <laughs> written down there, and then yeah. nine num said something else in alien, and then Lando replied. <laughs> and I thought, well, hang on a minute, you know, I kind of need to act with intent, and and um, I knew that it was going to be replaced with some crazy unknown at that time alien language. So right. And we're just putting down guide voices. You know, the, the Falcon itself is being rocked around by stagehands. And, you, you know, the sound is not, you know, it's, just, it's a guide sound. So, so what I did was I wrote my, uh, what I thought he would be saying in English, uh, you know, in my script, in, in pencil, though. Not in pen, in pencil. <laughs> and, uh, and I showed it to George. He was sitting in his director's chair in and, and the morning of the shoot. And I said, uh, you know, can I can I say these things in the script? You know, that, that make sense for, for the acting and the intent, and they're logical to what Lando's responses were. And he just kind of looked it over, and then looked at me and said, "Yeah, sure." You know, so I know I was mic'd up and everything. So I just spoke all my lines in English, um, and it was it was great. You I know? wonder if that's ever shown up anywhere because there there's some famous footage of Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca yeah, there is, saying, isn't there? that old man's mad. Isn't and I that love great? watching that footage. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Probably, it probably exists somewhere in the yeah. Lucas archives. However, when we shot um, Ten Num in the B-Wing, which was Nine Num in a different hat and, and, yeah. and a green right. uh, shirt, you can see that in one of the uh, DVD extras, I think. Oh, really? Um, oh, that's and cool. We were just kind of improvising stuff, and you can hear my my voice oh, okay. in, the, in the background. In, in that I've watched all English. those extras, so I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah, but I'm gonna have go to go back and, and check look, it out. And you'll hear me just saying random stuff, right. you know, uh, in, you know, with my my London accent, <laughs> and uh, it never got used. You know, it was it was cut, so they never voiced right. it or anything. So there's that. Yeah. Was was the character a full a, a application or mask but did it have any animatronics to it as so well originally yeah he was um when he when he, he they first created the uh the the the, the sculpt uh in at ilm dave carson i think sculpted that at, at, at lucasfilm there um but he was just a background alien so he didn't have any he was just a pull on mask he didn't have any articulation mm-hmm. in the face at all so so when George pulled him uh, to be kind of featured with Lando about halfway through the film, I suggested that uh, maybe we make him into a puppet to Phil Tippett, who was heading up the creature shop. Right. And we turn him into a hand puppet so that he could move his mouth and work him like a Muppet. So um, we did a little film test, and George Lucas uh, approved that and liked that. So then I, I was saying, well, you know, you can add little eye blinks in there with uh, cable controls and uh, wiggle his ears and stuff like that. So they built that into him and, oh, and cool. shipped him off to, to uh, California. And two weeks later, he came back sort of mechanized as a sort of a, a semi-animatronic hand puppet. Oh, really? So was, you, you're, you weren't wearing it? Or? So in the Millennium Falcon in Return of the Jedi, he was essentially a large Muppet, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. but with uh, uh, cable-controlled eye blinks and uh, ear, ear wiggles, which was uh, uh, performed both by uh, Tim Rose and Simon Williamson. On cable control. Oh wow! So I had two assistants, and my my left hand. I'm left-handed, so my left hand was inside the mouth. Uh, I was laying flat on my back in the Falcon. They had to cut the base of the seat out to make me fit, which, uh, which was uh, uh, scary to them because they were like, "Oh, these are these are 1973 race car seats. We can't get these again." You know, are you sure you yep. really want to cut that out? It's like it's the only way I can fit in there. And I had a little monitor so I could see the camera. And uh, and we worked him, and oh, my right hand was in his right hands, operating the steering yoke okay. in the Falcon, and the left hand was just a dummy, fake hand rigged onto the oh, really? onto the yoke. So that's how he was worked. Um, and then in the new movies, uh, he was an animatronic mask that I could see through his eyes. Oh, right, I had read that it was uh, yeah, that you were in it in exactly. in the new movies, and uh, and now I had legs and I could run around and interact with everybody uh, and see through his eyes when they didn't fog up, you know. Uh, but, <laughs> it, you know, and then I could fall over and bump into things. And so he, it was a whole, yeah, the new, the new trilogy is a whole different uh, yeah. way of performing him. But I'm still trying to apply the same sort of thought processes and the same, to me, to me Nine Num is not a typical Star Wars creature. He's not a creature. You know, he's more sort of a, I see him more as a, a um, like he's, a humanoid. He's quite kind human, of thing. but he's also a little bit cartoony. He's a bit 
yeah. I approach it more as an uh, you know an animation, sort of very clean sort of poses and and you know his eyes go wide and you, mm-hmm. you know he's very sort of pose to pose, almost like animation in a way. So I still with the puppet I approached him in that way, and I still approach him that way when I'm wearing the costume. So he's he's not sort of a writhing you know squinting blinking right. creature, but he's very he's he's like almost the most cartoony. Or, or sort of clean uh, to me creature in Star Wars. I, I, more I totally see what you're saying with that. I think more yeah, cartoony. Uh, so he's a, he's sort of an anomaly to me in, in, yeah. in the Star Wars world. He is uh, the most h- human of the alien right? types. I, I would think, think. maybe yeah. you yeah. know, um, but he's quite likable. You know, I always when I first saw him, I thought he kind of reminded me of Dopey in Snow White. You know, he had those big ears. <laughs> and the, oh my and God, the, that's the so big true. Eyes. So so. I, and you know, I was seventeen at the time when okay. we shot that. So, really? Wow. So I was, you know, he, his kind of kind of demeanor in the movie, where he's like, "Yeah, let's go get him," and that's really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and let's blow up this Death Star, and I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> you know, that was kind of like how I was at right. the time. Yeah. And there's, now, you there's know, here a we are. Full enthusiasm conveyed by that character. Yeah, right? yeah, just, yeah, you know, and so yep. it's funny that, but but now that you know, <laughs> we're we're thirty five. Absolutely, we're thirty five <laughs> years on. Um, or 37 years on, you know, he's 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 older like I am, and there's mm-hmm. more at stake, and uh, you know, there's there's he understands that there's there's lives at, at stake, right? So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> you should so, tell them his, his species lives like 300 years. I th- so you could be in every movie well, going forward, I think for, forever. Yeah, the so. minimum lifespan is about 150. Oh, oh, so okay. he's about middle aged right yeah, now. Yeah, he's got plenty. So, of time uh, to so. he's still yeah. young guy. So given yet. where we saw him at the end of the Last Jedi, is it is it fair to assume we might be seeing him again? Well, in know, a couple the, months, there were a, a handful of rebels that survived in the Millennium. Who was that, by the way? That just I don't know. Oh, I thought you knew him. Oh, no, I we know. thought maybe you knew him. He's, he's oh, he went that way. I thought he was. I, he went into I, the bar. Oh, I thought he was okay. maybe one of assumed, another Star Wars. Yeah, we assumed that was a friend of yours. Somebody <laughs> just came by, and we don't know who that oh, is. Oh, jeez, I thought he was like the uh, IG-88 guy Clearly, he didn't. No, I, I knew it wasn't up. Bill Hargreaves. There, yeah. there are four of us were having microphones, and yeah, that's right. yeah. he wanted in on the fun. What we were doing. But so we'd anyway. much rather talk to you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, what was that again? So just try to understand where maybe we'll. We've got a movie coming out in two months. Are we going? Can you so, say if, if so, you may show up in that well, movie? Logically, he would be because yes. he was one of the few survivors yes. yep. uh, that, that made it onto the Falcon. And the people that made it onto the Falcon are, are the, uh, you know, the ones that... That's that, true. That right. I may have to go the, walk back and watch that scene. Even you'll see I said him I with, uh, watch that movie he's with uh, Finn at the end in yes, the Falcon. Yes. And he's, he, I'm schooling him on how to fly an X-Wing is what I'm doing. I was trying to crack him up and make, make uh, John Boyega laugh, so, which I succeeded in a few takes in doing. Oh, great. And, well, uh, and, I, and, I, and again, I, I'm not asking you this question. I'm just making it as a statement. But we've we've heard and read that Wedge will be back in this movie as well. I don't know if that's officially been announced, but we've read that he's yes, he has here. said that. I, I so assume, I'm hoping that that's I true. That's true. Yeah. Um, it sounds. I don't know either. But I would sounds, love for that. I would love to see correct. that. Yeah. And uh, it's yeah. So that's exciting, you know. And we have Billy D. Williams yep. back finally, and I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah. Um, so yes, logically, of course. Right. Yeah. But I, I, th- I think I really do think they just forgot to kill Nine Num off, and they had to think, okay, we got <laughs> to bring him back into the Falcon really at the end. The maybe that last maybe yeah, they kind of really did the star of the whole so. eleven movies, and we just don't well, know it. He's, he's up there. Yeah. He's up there now. Yeah. I mean, certainly this is his fourth fourth movie now. So. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no, it, it, it's I'm I'm very excited about about the rise of Skywalker and, and uh, I had a lot of fun working on that film uh, I I was involved in other characters uh, as well oh, so, great. Um, which was nice and uh, I, I really love what what choices they made about about uh, moving forward with the story and the characters um, I mean I think it was very smart and satisfying and respectful so I'm. Th- really thank you for saying all of those words. Just I'm, <laughs> well, you know, it's what I saw and what I witnessed and what I That's felt, great. and it's what JJ articulated to us all himself, yep. uh, to the crew and the cast. Yep. And uh, you know, he. I think he didn't have an easy job. He didn't. No, we say that. Yeah, we, we say this all the time. Big, big he job. A huge, on this huge movie. task. I mean, a, and. A lot to resolve, and we, a lot we, of, we yeah. could not imagine anyone better suited to doing it than him. Well, and we're really just 
He oh. understood yeah. what you know the weight of the situation. I think, yeah. and uh, you know, I I I have so much. I mean, everybody loved him so much. Yeah. Loved working with him, and he yep. was so so kind. And uh, you know, any of us could go up to him and 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 talk with him about certain things and. Um, D- and Dave and I met him briefly once, yeah, and he, he came across as a he's a super nice well, guy. Well, he's very smart, yeah. he's yeah. very talented, and thoughtful. You, he and didn't yeah. doesn't just answer a no. question without sort of taking yep. it in and thinking. It was about before it. the the Force Awakens oh. had come out, oh, okay. but he was already involved. He probably, yeah, yeah. He, well, he was already he was already to involved. Overlap yeah. for the next movie yeah. and stuff, and and I always. I know he originally he said, oh, well, you know, I'm done with The Force Awakens, right. that's it. Yep. And I knew that he wouldn't be able to do uh, The Last Jedi because it's too, you know, it's too right. soon. He can't, you know, a human can't do that much. But I was always hoping he would return for, for the final. And when I heard that that was going to happen, I, I thought, yeah, we're, we're in good hands. You know, I, I mean, it's a, it's a hard job to do. And sure, not everybody will be happy but most people i think will be you I can't think. please everybody but well, you can't but but i i think he he you know he's smart enough and he's a fan himself and he loves he loves this stuff he really does and he cares deeply about everything right yeah. and i think you know he is very smart and you know the film certainly evolved as we moved through the shooting in it, you know, because they just kept trying to trying to make things better and plus things and and uh, you know make tweaks and adjustments as we went along, which is great because they're not locked into a film from the, you know day one of filming. Sure, right. But but they're they're okay with with thinking okay, you know this isn't quite working or let's just tweak this and this needs to be stronger. You know, and you do little reshoots and pickups and things like that to make right. it better, which is a great way to make a film. It's a very organic, you know, open sort of collaborative way to make a film. And that's that's having the, the smarts and the confidence to know, uh, you know, to not be afraid to, to do that. And that's Kathleen Kennedy and it's JJ. And, you know, I would do anything. If they asked me to do anything, I would do it because I trust them implicitly. Right. I really, really do. And, uh, you know, it was such a great experience for me. It really was. It, that's I had awesome. such a great time. And I'm uh, certainly excited to to see this when it, it finally pops you know to me it's like giving birth yeah you know, uh, you, know you don't know what your baby's going to look like right. until it's, it comes out we have such high hopes as fans and, so and you know i think there's a lot of great things for us all there's some easter eggs in there for right. everybody and and uh, I, I think they came up with with the most amazing smartest solutions to uh, where we were left off with the last movie right. that i know of anyway so well, um, and it couldn't have been an easy job stepping into that, no. especially with Carrie passing. And that like was that just made it all. so much harder yeah. than it already was going to be. Yeah, that was that was. Um, it it wasn't easy. Um, I mean, it was it was a, a wonderful thing to be a part of. Um, and Billy Lord, of course, was was part of right. all that uh, process, and she was, of course just amazing and lovely and real and, and helped us all with that yeah so um that sort of legitimized it all for us and told us you know we're we're doing the right thing we're okay and uh it was to me it was quite moving and stunning and amazing um so uh yeah i'm i'm certainly pleased with the choices that were made right uh, i don't I couldn't have suddenly. It makes us very happy it, to hear that. These are all the things we needed to hear. <laughs> well, yes, you know, this we're, is just my own experience. Without but really still, saying you, you, anything. You, but we trust you. Yeah, you're not you saying know. anything. I'm not really saying anything. You are. No, but, we, but, but, um, but if, if you were going strictly no comment at this point, we'd be very worried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you well, feel about the film? No comment. Well, It'd be a little, be a little yeah, scary to no, us. No, no. So. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, the, uh, the whole yeah. story or anything. Right. And I don't yep. want to. You know, when right. I go see the movie, it'll be the same as you seeing it for the first time. I've not seen any edits or right. anything. I don't yep. know what's going to be in right. or what's out and what other bits they filmed when I wasn't around, which was a lot. So, uh, you But know. you got to feel the vibe on the set. You, oh, were, you, were, you were there, so that's helpful it was, I for loved us. it. I, you know, I, I, I just loved being around every day and around the... The cast and the crew and the support team and the and um, and the uh, CFX Neil Scanlon's crew were great with us all. Yeah. And it was every day was such a gift, you know. Uh, we did some location work and mostly studio, but uh, over I think we, we we took about twelve months entirely from the first day of shooting to the final day of pickups, you yep. know, with the, with the gaps in between. Right. Um, but uh, I think it's 
I think it's just going to be epic, and I, you know, I think we'll all cry and yeah. laugh, and I think for the most part, or most of us will be uh, pretty. I think we'll be happy with yeah. it, I, you great. know, just from that's what great. I know. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. Oh, and, that's great. And so it's something that I don't ever take for granted, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being a part of. It's just right. amazing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I hope I get to, to, to do this again at some point, right. you know, well, in the future. You know, now with Disney Plus, there's a, a chance there Mandalorian yeah. goes well and that all looks good. We could have a nine nub series, you know. Oh. It's just well, a, a, I'd like yeah. to see him pop up in um, in the uh, Obi Wan series. Yeah, that would be oh, great yes. too. Why not? He should he's, have been in Solo, we, but we, hey, we'll let that yeah, go. Yeah. We'll let that go. <laughs> we don't know uh, again where he's been before, where he, how he, where, what point he comes into the story. I know. It's, it's, well, he was around a as a of, smuggler and all kinds of oh, things. Lots ships. of potential there. So the I Mandalorian. Know, you could be in the Mandalorian. You were in the last in the Return of the Jedi. He got to do something a few years after. He was around before and during and after and there's all this backstory where he rescued uh, you know everyone from Alderaan yep. for, for Leia and yeah. stuff so yep. which is kind of interesting yeah. I like that so so, so uh, you said you were 17 when you made Return of the Jedi I was yeah so I have a question uh, maybe you remember maybe you don't but do you remember how you felt when you first saw the fact that you were made into an action figure? We're all action figure collectors, and our friend Daryl, who's sitting here, worked in the toy business for almost 20 <laughs> That's years. That's so, so funny, yeah. I remember so going, do you remember what that yeah, was like? Yeah, I do. I remember going to the, uh, uh, into, into one of the shopping centers in England and seeing the first range of uh, Jedi figures on, on, the, on the racks, and, and there he was. And it's like, wow. <laughs> That's I mean, terrific. It was... It was it's like it was kind of surreal you know it was sort of me but it wasn't you know it's like wow look at that and I had to buy it of course of course <laughs> yep. it's like oh there's that guy that I did and my goodness he, he must be somebody now you know because when you make this stuff you're kind of working in a, a bit of a void and it's sort of a black hole in a way you right. know you do it and you move on but but then to see him several months you know six months or whatever it was later or nine months you know, as a, as a toy with slightly different spelling in his name. Right. And, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's like, wow, there he is. He's, he's actually this thing that exists outside of me now. You know, he's his own thing at that point. It's physical and, at that point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, a lot of, the, for a lot of people over here, he was a mail away, wasn't he, in the yeah. States? He started yeah. out that so, way, yeah. Yeah. But also that kids all over everywhere are going to be making up their own stories and incorporating, know. you know, it's just like, and, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's interesting because uh, people... D- just really, I guess, like that the look of that character yes. and the idea yep. of him. It's a great and, design. And there's there's an approachability was. to him. Yeah, yeah. he's yep. not really a typical creature. He's, he's not you know. threatening, and he's, um, he's, yeah. he's joyous. I mean, there's, there's yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. The, the, <laughs> that's the thing. Just, which, yeah. Which, yeah, I just threw in the laugh. You know, that was improvised. Oh, that's great. That right? that's, oh, just that's just great. in my in my memory. And then, yeah. So you know, it's a, a thing that you do. You're like, oh, okay, I'll do that laugh thing that we do as as a, a puppeteer, you know, oh, and, and then they, had to, they cut it in and Ben Burt had to, you know, match a laugh on top of that uh, with the with the voice guy. So, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's it's amazing. It really is. And, and I do like the little guy. I do it's like... It's endured a long time. It's, yeah. So I do have to apologize for something. The latest version of the Nine Numb figure that we did apparently was too short. So we got a lot of... No, <laughs> lot of, actually, you know what? It was correct because oh, I'm five great. foot six. Thanks. This is going to vindicate and you. And the new one was a scan of me in the costume, uh, so it's actually the it's actually correct. He is supposed to be that height. If you if you look at the um, the, uh, the 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 the, um, the descriptions of how high the character actually is, I think there's like an inch difference between what they say yep. he is and what I am. Um, so he's he's actually not the six foot two uh, guy that that um, he is in the games and in the other action figures. Right, he is supposed right. to be about my height. Um, I, think, I think the head was scaled down because he had kind yep. of a large head. They scaled down the head a little bit for the, for the new action figure from The Force Awakens, but it is actually a scaled down version of the correct uh, version of me. It's a 3D scan of me in the suit. So it is actually correct. You don't know how happy that makes me. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it, it makes me happy because it's like a little mini me. You know? Oh, so oh it, that's it, great. It, so. It, so no, it was it was correct, and people Contra- don't, controversy over. Fans, controversy, you, are, you heard it here. 
Daryl oversaw that toy no, line. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, it's me. It's a, it's a scaled down version with my little belly sticking out. And <laughs> my, you know, I'm short. I'm a short guy. There and you go, is, fans. Now you heard it. Yeah. yeah so, right. oh, you know, the, the head was scaled a little bit because just to make it kind of proportionally nicer. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it's it's correct. It is actually it's the most accurate uh, version of Nine Numb as an action figure. So there you go. Did did. He, the character have that name in the script, or because a lot some characters were named yeah. like after they were it made That's into right. action figures, right? Yeah, good question. Well, no, uh, he, he, it was the spelling was changed slightly from the script to the action figure. Oh, really? Originally, he was a background alien with with no. He wasn't going to be in the Falcon. He was literally a background yeah. character, and he was just a pull on mask. He didn't have any movement in the yeah. face at all, and he was. Um, he didn't have a name, and I still had the sheet uh, from the creature shop uh, from '82, and and he was literally just number nine on the list. You know, he didn't have a name. You know, alien number nine. Oh. And so, really, uh, <laughs> light bulb goes on. And so then, when George pulled him out, in it was like April May time, halfway through the film. George says, oh, I want that guy to be uh, Lando's co-pilot. He, Lando, you know, we can't use Chewie. He's gone somewhere else. Yeah. So, uh, so Lando needs another alien co-pilot. So George liked the look of that mask. So then he pulled him out of the chorus line, the background chorus, to be the co-pilot. And so then they changed the name to from number nine to nine numb. And then when the toy came out, they changed the spelling to be a little funkier yeah. to make it more alien. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, that's, that's why awesome. He's, that's why he's nine numb, not nin numb or nin yeah, yeah, numb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gotcha. So we there you go. We have an episode it's three guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have that piece of paper that has him as number nine. Oh, from, that's great. Alien number so nine. there you go. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I love that. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah, it's yeah, great. It's, it's so awesome. It's so weird and funky. Because I've heard Mark Hamill interviewed where he talked about on the set, they would just make up names for the aliens because yeah. they didn't have names in the script. call them something. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. So it's, it's just default. You know, it's yeah. just like, yeah. oh, well, what are we going to call? Oh, quick, let's, let's do that. So, oh, that's so funny. So number nine. Love it. Come in, number nine. Your time is up. Yeah. Oh my wow. God, that's well, great. <laughs> we can't thank you enough for oh sitting goodness, down and, and doing yeah. this with us. This is great, and Absolutely. we're big. Like I said before, we're big fans, so we're so excited for the new movie to come Me out. Me too. Me can't too. Can't wait. Honestly, yeah. And thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. We'll all. I'll be just like you, watching it for the first time yeah. with my mouth hanging open, and I will laugh and cry, and it'll be amazing. Yes. So yeah. thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Those are all of our interviews from Rhode Island Comic Con. Um, hope you guys enjoyed re-listening and revisiting those uh, fun times with us. Um, we enjoyed going back and digging those things out of the archive and, and revisiting them as well. So um, hopefully we'll have some new shows to go to next year. We'll be able to bring some new guests on the show and get some new interviews and you know share our love for all things uh, movies, toys, TV shows, comics, collecting, and superheroes, as the song goes. So anyway, uh, have a wonderful rest of 2020 let's hope that 2021 is uh, a better year and uh as always from the bottom of our hearts thanks for listening Uh